you know, the world premieres, we try and really focus on, you know, smaller teams sometimes too that, that really deserve to be on our stage are not from these big sort of monolithic companies, um, but are really independent creators building their own games. So that's also something that's kind of important to us as well. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a conversation we have every year and that happens really starting tomorrow once we know the, the subset of nominees that we can kind of figure out um, how to do that. Uh, and we try to sort of do about half the awards every year as kind of our average. Um, I know some people want us to do every one, some people don't want any awards, they just want wall-to-wall -wall announcements, um, and that kind of constant balance is something that we're always um, thinking about. But it's a great question. Um, let's see. Um, next question. Um, will you do Game of the Decade when the show turns 10 years? Well, this is actually our 10th show. It's always our 10th show, but our 10th anniversary is next year. It's always a bit different, right? Because when you're born, you're zero until you turn one. Although I know in some cultures, I think you're know, born, you're one years old, I think. Could be wrong about that, but someone tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but, uh, so I don't know if we do a game of the decade. We thought about it, we talked about it. Um, it's so hard because games naturally progress technologically, you know, every year. So I, I remember a lot of amazing games from 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and when you go back and play them, we're like, ah, it's actually it wasn't as good as I remember it because you, you know, you sort of rose-colored glasses, you sort of look through things um, that are older sometimes. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's an interesting conversation. We talked about it. Um, I don't. We're not doing it this year. Um, maybe in the future we would. Things like that. Back when I used to work at Spike TV in the video game awards, we did the game of the decade thing for ten years of VGAs at Half Life Two One. Gabe Newell and the team came down for that, uh, which was fun. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. But again, it's sort of the same thing where it's like adding more categories. Um, I think we really want it to be sort of a different set of games, different things, like a bunch of drama, right? Online, we already have enough drama, but you know, but best game of the decade. So not happening this year, but definitely another thing that we sort of have, um, have talked about. Um, let's see. Um, with the, with the uh, rise of VTubers in gaming, will we ever see a VTuber possibly present an award? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a possibility. Um, you know, thinking about, I think, you know, we think of VTubing, we think of, uh, we think of also just, you know, uh, virtual characters and things like that, some of the amazing kind of performance capture stuff that's able to be done now in real time. Um, you know, there's a demo, I think Epic did a few years ago with Melina Jurgens, who's the, the actress that plays uh, Senua and Hellblade doing like a real time motion capture thing. So yeah, we talk about all that stuff. So anything's possible. If we can have Muppets on our stage, anything is possible, right guys? So um, let's see. Uh, what was my favorite reveal from last year's show? Hmm, good question. Last year was a really good show, uh, and I think it was emblematic of what a great year it's been for games, right? Because, um, you know, there's so many kind of big games that came out this year, franchises and sequels and things like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of things were special to me. Uh, Hades 2 was really amazing. I love the guys at Supergiant, and that was re I really wanted to lead off the show last year with an independent game. Um, so doing that with uh, Super Giant for Hades was, was really, really cool and special. Um, uh, Judas from Ken Levine, um, I was really excited to reveal that game with Ken. Uh, it's a game that we had talked about for years and, and finally was ready last year to reveal. They haven't really said anything since then about that game, but that was a really cool game. I'm a big fan of Ken's style of games and, and you know, the Bioshock sort of feels for that game. So uh, that, was really, uh, that was really cool. And, and that's oftentimes, you know, sometimes there'll be games that we've talked to teams about for years that just aren't right one year, they're not ready, and then it comes back around. You'll see some of that this year too. There'll be things that are finally ready um, that we've been waiting on for a while. Um, so that was cool. Uh, you know, Death Stranding 2 with Hideo Kojima uh, was obviously was really cool and, and awesome to sort of reveal that um, with him, um, which was really cool. So yeah, there was, I mean, Armored Core, the From Team, that was really special. Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, we had we were we were very lucky last year with all the games and the content that we had in our show. So um, things are constantly changing. But those are some of my favorites. But we had you know a lot of really great stuff um, last year, which was was really cool. So great question, um, which was really really good. Oh yeah, so in Korea is like that exactly. I think that's right. You turn right when you're born in Korea, you're one. Is that right? See, all right, making sense. But Game Awards when we were born, we were zero. So this is our tenth year. Um, and next year will be our uh, 10th anniversary year. All right, uh, good questions. All right, let's uh, see what else here, you guys. Um, am I physically capable of doing a backflip? Maybe, but I'm not going to try. I'll tell you that much. Um, be interesting. Wouldn't that be cool if I like came out on stage and did like, a backflip or something? I always think, I like sometimes when I 
I'm like, yeah, maybe I should like learn how to tap dance and like tap dance at the start of the show and just like blow you guys away with some crazy musical number I do where I backflip or I tap dance or I sing. Not happening this year, but um, sometimes when I'm feeling good, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll train for six months and I'll just blow you guys away with some crazy musical number. Not happening this year, but there is a good musical number. If, if you love musical numbers, and if you, I don't know if you guys have played Alan Wake, but there's an awesome uh, kind of musical number. I don't want to spoil it, but it's early in the game, but it's something that was very cool. That reminded me of like, I'm going to be cool to do musical stuff. Um, will there be an announcement that will knock our socks off? Asks Mr. Sakurai. Um... I don't know. We're not getting into that right now. Um, it's always hard because everyone has their own expectations that they bring to, uh, as Alan Wake says, everyone has hopes and expectations that people bring to something. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll have some good stuff for you guys in three and a half weeks. Uh, there's lots going on behind the scenes. As we're trying to put things together and you know, we actually don't even know fully um, what's happening with some elements of the show. We're still working on some things. So um, yeah, well, hopefully it's going to be a good show. Uh, and we were working very hard, uh, and many teams around the world are working incredibly hard to try and impress you with, with what's coming next in game. So, um, too early to say, but uh, I'm, I will keep you posted. I'll do another stream. Once we get past the nominees, we'll probably talk a little bit more about some of that stuff, but I really honestly do not want to distract from the, the nominations um, tomorrow. I think it's really important to focus on that and celebrate those teams and all the amazing games that we've had this year before we kind of think about what's next. Um, why are the Game Awards on a Thursday? Um, Great question. Uh, I think it's just where we started, honestly, back in 2014 was with a Thursday broadcast for um, the Game Awards, and um, we just have sort of stayed there, honestly. Um, it's a tough time of year with the holidays, trying to figure out when to do things. We've talked about, could we do it on a weekend? And I know, look, if you're in Europe or overseas, I know it's like it's kind of this time of night, um, which is, you know, uh, early in the morning on Friday. I know it's not ideal. It's a little bit better in Asia because it's kind of the next morning. Um, it's hard to find time that works for everyone, and we've talked about doing things at, you know, different times of day. We do the, the games combo in El Show, we do in Europe, you know, in the evening, which is earlier in the day. Uh, Summer Game Fest, we do a little bit earlier in the day here in L.A., so it's just kind of, it's never perfect, and I think Thursday's just where we've kind of ended up um, with the show over the years, and it seems to work relatively well. The, the audience has been growing every year for the show, so we're kind of like, let's not mess up, sort of, it seems to be going okay. But in a future year, we might be able to, to do it on a different um, day of the year, um, or day of the week, I should say. But yeah, good question. Something we definitely think about. Um, let's see. Um, will the broadcast be streamer friendly, or will we have to deal with copyrighted music during the awards show or trailers? Or is it a thing that you don't know what's going to be in some of the trailers? Well, it's a good question. It's something we definitely think about. Um, you know, there's lots of popular music often used in video game trailers. Um, we work with the game companies and the streaming platforms to make sure that everything is sort of uh, streamer friendly and streamer safe. It's not to get too much into it, but it's a complicated thing because music rights, you know, sometimes there are different people in different countries that own rights. And even though someone approves something somewhere along the chain, it didn't get told to the person that has the rights in, you know, Vietnam to, you know, this song and it could get blocked there. So it's never a perfect thing. Um, but yeah, we work really hard to make sure that the show is sort of streamer friendly um, for live. Sometimes with, you know, VOD clips and things like that, it can get complicated. But yeah, we love co-streaming. I mean, there were, you know, I don't know, 10,000 people that co-streamed the show last year on Twitch. So we would love to have you co-stream if it makes sense um, for you. Um, great question. Um, oh my god, there's so many questions here. Do I have a special pair of socks I wear every year? And do you call them your Lucky Jeffs? Great idea. I don't. I don't, I don't really even spend much time thinking about my socks, honestly. But I probably should. Think about my shoes, right? I figure out what that's going to be. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Will, the, in this year's show, be a big announcement? I don't know. Depends on how you define a big announcement. Um, oh, here's an interesting question. Has there ever been an idea for the Game Awards that just could not happen for a variety of reasons? Sure, there's always things we want to do. Um, some things are, I mean, when we started the show, I always wanted to do the orchestra, and financially, we couldn't afford to do it until 2017, I think. So the first 14, 15, yeah, first three years, we couldn't do that. Um, so that was the thing. And then, yeah, there are always things that, you know, can't happen because... A game is not ready. That often happens, right? Where we think we're going to be able to do something, the developer will, will email me or call me up or Zoom me and say, hey, 
sorry, we're just not ready. Um, and, you know, that, that often happens with our show, and, and people always wonder, why wasn't this at the show? It's like, well, because it's probably not ready. Um, uh, and so that often happens. Uh, it's disappointing sometimes, but it definitely happens often. Um, yeah, so there are things we ask for that don't happen. There are things with certain talent or guests that, you know, don't happen for a variety of reasons. So, yeah, there's always... Uh, a show like this, it's there's so many things going on, right? That um, there are always things that break your heart that you can't do. Um, and then there are fun things that happen. Like the first year that we had the Muppets, I was like, oh my god, could we really get the Muppets to come to the Game Awards? And it was amazing. We got That was with uh, Ninja and Pepe, if you remember that. Uh, came to that, and then we sort of done something Muppety kind of every year since then, I think. I think we might have skipped a year or not. But um, yeah, so there's always fun things that do happen. So I always kind of focus on the glass half full of the things that do happen versus the things that don't happen. But yes, there are always things that, that don't happen. Um, let's see. Um, next question. Will you be adding more live performances this year or hopefully the same as last year? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's still We're still figuring some stuff out, but uh, I mean... We love doing some live stuff. I think the thing that we found over the years is that we really want to do things that are really connected to games. So, um, you know, we're not just going to have kind of a band play for the sake of like, oh, here's an awesome band playing a song. It's really got to tie emotionally sort of two games, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, our performances are kind of um, ever evolving with our show. Um, and I love live music, right? I go to concerts all the time and, and I love music. But um, there's actually not, I mean, I'm always surprised that there are not that many kind of, you know, big acts doing things. Like last year we had, I mean, Hosier did the uh, God of War thing, which was awesome, and Halsey did the Diablo thing, which was really cool. So sometimes things end up like that. Other other years, it's sort of different stuff. The orchestra is really big and important to us. So um, yeah, and I know some people like that stuff, and some people like just show me the games. And our show is this kind of hodgepodge of all these other things sort of coming together, and it's a little bit of awards, a little bit of music, a little bit of world premieres, and such, and it just kind of comes together into this unique concoction. And, as I stir my cauldron right now, I don't quite know what's going to come out uh, on December 7th, but I will keep you posted. Um, let's see. Um, lots more questions. Sorry, just flipping through all this stuff. Um, do I have a favorite Game of the Year medley so far? I really love the 2020 one in particular. Yeah, they've all been good. Uh... 2018, I remember, was really cool because it had, like, Red Dead and God of War, and I think I think Spider-Man was that year, too. That was really cool, sort of all those out there. Um, 2020 was great as well. That was really fun with, like, Animal Crossing, and that was a pandemic, you know, there's a pandemic year. So that, I think, was just really special to sort of have that music even played, right? Because we had played a lot of these games in the pandemic and having that, like, the Animal Crossing music live. I think it went from, like, Animal Crossing into Doom or something, and that was a fun one. So, yeah, every year's different, and it's actually really fun to see what Lauren does with it, and uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not very musically inclined. Uh, I love music, but I, I don't know how to write music or, or compose it. And I'm always amazed about how those songs come together with the, the different tempos and feelings. And I mean, he's just he's masterful how Lauren does that. And I don't think people fully appreciate how hard that is to take, you know, all these different games and the music and kind of make this three and a half minute piece. And he he does a masterful job. And I think you, I mean, you guys I know love it and it's really special and cool. So that's really become like a signature performance for us in the show. Um, and I, I'm indebted to Lauren that he does that every year. It's it's not an easy task musically to take these very diverse, you know, games where, yeah, that year in 2020, I think it was going from like, what was that? It was probably like Final Fantasy and Animal Crossing and Doom, Last of Us. Um, trying to remember all my nominees over the years. But yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing. So um, we're gonna get to work on that tomorrow when everything gets announced. Um, Let's see. With the rise of video game adaptations, is there a game that you would love to see adapted into a film or show? Well, honestly, a lot of them, a lot of them are happening. There are a lot of those going on. Probably too many. Um, I'm excited about Bioshock. I think that's going to become. I think it's like a film at Netflix or a series at Netflix. I'm excited about. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a, you know, there's like there's a God of War thing. There's a Horizon thing. There was a Halo thing. There's, I mean. Here's a war thing, or yeah, I just like I feel like every major franchise is somehow being adapted in some way. I, I hope what's going to happen is not just like taking a game and adapting it, but kind of like building on the world and telling other stories and things like that. So I think that kind of thing is much more interesting to me. And I thought Last of Us did a cool job of that, of kind of telling some side stories and things you didn't see in the game. So I'm hoping there's a little bit more of that, um, you know, in the future. Um, let's see. 
How involved is Kyle Bossman this year? The Bossman will be involved, as he always is in all things Game Awards. Um, let's see. Will there be any gameplay demos shown? Um, this is an interesting question. Um, we typically don't do gameplay demos at the Game Awards, uh, and we do we do trailers that feature gameplay. Absolutely, and it's really important to us, actually. And you'll see even the, again. I don't want to talk too much about this year's show, but there are often things where, like, people will pitch us a CG trailer, right, which we're all familiar with, and I'll be like, ah, cool, but, like, let's show the game. So we do these things now that are kind of hybrid trailers where it's like there's some CG, but then we also show the gameplay. I think that's really important to actually show the game, because I don't know about you guys, but I just have been desensitized over the years to all these CG trailers that are, like, bombastic and amazing, and then you're like, oh, it's a top-down RTS, which, nothing against top-down RTSs, but I'm like, it just doesn't really match with the the CG is, and so many in-game, you know, footage now, it looks so great in and of itself, so, um, yeah, so, uh, but, but that said, no, we don't do, like, here's a 15-minute gameplay demo in the Game Awards, things tend to be shorter in Game Awards, uh, you know, at Summer Game Fest or Gamescom, we can go a little bit longer, um, but traditionally for stuff, um, um, you know, that is, uh, that is kind of like, in our show, it's really more trailers and reveals and first looks at games versus, like, here's 15 minutes of a game. So I'd, I'd love to do that at some point um, with the right game, but traditionally, like, we tend to do more trailers. It's a good question. It's something we definitely think about um, there. Um, do you like the mix of fan industry voting that you have? Do you think it can be improved? So, yeah, we could talk a bit about that. Um, you know, the voting for the nominees is fully selected by our sort of jury. The, the public is not involved in that. And then the winners, it's a split vote between the, the media jury and the public, and the split is 90% um, media, 10% public. And look, you could, could you switch that? We have a category called Player's Voice that is 100% fan voted. Um, the thing with fan voting is uh, I, it's really important, but I also feel like, and we've seen this, people can sometimes game the system or socially engineer things, and we don't want it to just be a popularity contest or who promoted their nomination the most or who had the biggest audience or the biggest um, you know, group of people that they could get to go vote. Um, so that's the thing with fan voting is it's it's hard. And also, like, for instance, games that are on a single platform versus multi-platform means they have inherently probably less people that have played them, so less people would vote for them. Um, so we think about it, and, like, could we slide it in one direction or the other, potentially? Um, you know, we we look at the, the results of the, the fan voting versus the media voting, and it's actually, like, you know, speaking generally, it's actually not that far off um, sometimes. So in terms of like, you know, what the public wanted versus what the, the media wanted and that kind of like blends together. So yeah, we're always thinking about it. We're pretty happy with the the process overall. I think, you know, I look back over our show over the years, I think like the right games tend to win. You may disagree, but I mean, I think it's like usually like it's pretty legit what wins. Um, and we have the player's voice and, you know, that last year was crazy, right? It was 100% fan voted and was just kind of nutty. So um, it's something that we definitely think about. Um, I mean, that's the same split that we've had, I don't know, probably the last five years or so, something like that. It's always been like that. So we think about it, and we may change it in the future. We're The thing with Game Awards we really try to do is be very uh, responsive to sort of feedback and kind of pivot if needed. So if, if we feel like, oh, this isn't working, we can switch it. Um, and But, you know, the fan votes, like, do matter, and, you know, especially in a tight year like this year or other years, I'm sure the public voting will actually, like, really affect the results of the show um, in some ways. So, you know, tight races, it matters a lot, right? If it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a landslide year or something, then it doesn't matter as much. But um, this year especially, I think, I mean, I don't know, but I think it's probably going to be pretty competitive um, with the games that are up there. Um, but great question. And, something, and I, th I appreciate you thinking about that because we definitely think about that stuff too. Um... Thoughts on the new gaming handheld systems and where you want that type of hardware to go in the future? Yeah, I showed the the PlayStation Portal thing and the Steam Deck. I'm I love that stuff. Um, you know, I travel a lot for my job uh, and personally and stuff like that, so I'm not always at home, kind of tethered to a TV to to play games. And I love the idea of just you know being able to kind of pick things up and, and play them. Um, and I think now you know streaming tech is good enough that we can do that, um, and it works out pretty well. So um, I think we're going to see more of that moving forward. Um, I also think you're eventually going to find sort of like controllers or going to, you know, Bluetooth or AirPlay into TVs and other sets. And, the, you know, your, your game is going to kind of live in the cloud to some degree. Um, so, yeah, I think we're going to see more handheld stuff and more, you know, cool, accessible stuff um, that you can kind of play on the go. Like on, you know, PlayStation Portal, I can play Alan Wake 2, right, off my PS5 and things like that. 
Uh, can't play it on Steam Deck because it's not on Steam. But um, yeah, I think we're going to see more of that for sure. And they're really, I mean, there are a lot of good uh, gaming handhelds. And like the Steam Deck OLED, I have it around here somewhere. Like the screen, beautiful. Like it's really, really good. Um, so great question. Um, let's see. My personal favorite game of the year. I'll take a pass on that. Um, is there a chance for the Game Awards to be hosted in different cities or countries? Yes, I think there definitely is the opportunity for that to happen in a, in a future year. I would really love to do that, actually. Um, you know, before the pandemic, I always dreamed of one day doing the Game Awards in uh, a, a different city. I was like, maybe one, maybe for our 10th year, we go do the show live in Tokyo, or we could do the show uh, in London or something like that. So um, it's another that's just a cost thing to be able to do it. But I would love eventually to take the show on the road, as they say. Um, and uh, move it around the world. Uh, and, you know, like I think if we did the Game Awards in Tokyo, like a Tokyo Dome or something like that, that would just be insane. It'd be so cool. Um, so maybe one year. It's just obviously like very expensive, very challenging. Technically, our show is, you know, a very complex process to put it all together and, and make it happen. So to travel a team there and work with foreign crews and stuff, it's, it's, it's just, it's harder. And we have a very high standard for that. So, um, yeah, I would love to do it, though. And like just like we do Gamescom in Germany, I love doing things around the world. So um, that would be a dream for me to be able to do it in a different city. And, and, you know, we've been in L.A. for the past nine years, the first year we were in Las Vegas. So, yes, I think down the road, for sure, we'd love to do more internationally. And that's definitely something that we kind of uh, think about. Um, all right, next question. Um, has there been a game that you were surprised that was nominated? Um, I just think it's like in the past, I guess. Um, yeah, they're always fun surprises. I would say it's less surprises and more just like cool discoveries of like, wow, that's an awesome game. Um, and I, I don't know about you, but when I see the nominees, it's like, whoa, that's cool. I haven't heard of that game. Let me go check it out and play it. And I think that one of the best parts of our show is that people can discover new games to play. Um, by our show. I mean, you know, when you see the game of the year list, you're probably like, oh, I played a bunch of those. But when you see the independent game list or the games for impact or the debut indie game list, you might be like, oh, that's cool. I've never heard of this game. Let me go check it out. So I love that element of discovery. And those sometimes are surprising, surprising that you didn't know about them, right? I mean, I, my whole life is about video games and I'm still discovering new games, which is makes sense because on Steam there's, you know, 200 new games a day or something like that that come out. So um, yes, though, definitely something that we, we love to do is kind of surprise people with kind of new games on the list. And look, on the other side, there are always surprises and things that don't get nominated. And I'm sure tomorrow there will be some controversy about something that didn't get nominated or didn't get nominated enough or got left off the list, especially in a competitive year like this year. You know, a lot of people have asked, someone, no one's asked me this, but um, a lot of people have asked, like, because there were so many great games this year, you're going to expand the game of the year list to have, you know, 10 games, or TGA 10 or something like that. And no, we're not. We're going to keep it kind of to the same process we always have, which is six games, or if there was a tie, there could be seven or eight games, or I guess more. But it's, uh, you know, usually it's about six that, 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 that are on the list for game of the year. Um, and, you know, we, we did discuss that as well, the idea of, like, could we expand the list? Um, it's just hard because, you know, then... You want to be truly special when things are nominated, and I mean, we could have 30 games as nominees for Game of the Year, but obviously that's not quite the same. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and then you end up only still having one winner. So, I don't know, like, it's something we think about, um, but we're, we're sticking with sort of the same general sort of process that we've gone through in, uh, in past years for the, the number of nominees and categories. Um, lots of great questions. All right, I'm gonna have to go in a few minutes, guys. Um, how often does your favorite game also win Game of the Year? I don't know. Um, depends. I mean, I, I, I'm so close to the show and, and, and all this stuff. It's, I don't necessarily have a singular favorite game. I see sort of merit in, in a lot of the games that are nominated. Um, but yeah, there have been years where I'm like, you know, absolutely, like, I agree with the choice. I mean, the last one that was like, I think a real debate was, uh, or back in 2018, it was like God of War. Kind of winning across the show. After God of War ended up winning that year, and that was that was an interesting year, and that was dumb. I was like, oh wow, maybe either, I don't know. Um, and yeah, and also it's like you kind of look back and you wonder, like, did the right game win that year? Watch one in 2016 at the time. I remember that, you know, that was amazing. It was probably really the only, I think, multiplayer. I think so. The only multiplayer only game that's won. You guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that. Well, I, that's not true. It takes two, I guess. Is co-op only, um, but more story driven. But yeah, I think like Overwatch. That was kind of the time. Was like, I think that be that beat maybe it was like Uncharted 4 or something like that I can't remember what else was up that year um, 
But yeah, you look back and it's sort of like interesting over the 10 years, right? The games that have won. It's like, were those the right games that won or not? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. There's so, so much going on. Sometimes it's hard to kind of really uh, know what to expect. Um, without giving specifics, how nuts do you think the reveals will be this year? Not even touching that. Um, I hope it's going to be a good year and I hope you guys will enjoy what we have for you. Um, we're doing the best we can. Uh, you know, we really want to celebrate not only the year that was but what, what will happen in the future for the industry um, and you know you'll tell me afterwards if you liked what we had or didn't have um, we're just we're honored to do the show uh, and I think we're excited about some of the things we're definitely going to be showing you guys but um, I don't want to, to spoil spoil any of it for you um, are there any cool new indie games that we might see Again, I don't really talk about the reveals too much because I want to focus on the nominees. But yes, it's very important for us to have independent developers in the show uh, and give them a stage, uh, an opportunity. Especially, you know, this year with everything that's been going on in the industry, layoffs and, and just the economic challenges. Like, I, I have so much admiration for independent studios that build games on their own, take the risk, um, and do things on their own. And one of the things I, I hope about our show is that it's a great leveler and that it doesn't matter if you're, you know, the biggest game in the world, if you're three guys in a garage in, you know, some, or whoever in a garage, or wherever you live, just like people making games, um, we can still be on our stage, and we can still showcase games and things like that, and look, it's, it's, it's a challenging environment because we have so many things pitched and we can't go with everything, um, but I, I'm really proud that we do have a lot of room for independent games that hopefully can be on our stage and, and give people sort of an opportunity there. And again, as we get into it, we'll talk more about it. But yes, we have some really cool independent stuff I think that's going to happen at the show this year. Um, what am I going to wear? Uh, I do not know. I'm going to work on that. If I'm sick the day of the show, does Kyle get to host? Um, maybe. I don't know. Sydney will be there. She's good when it hosts the opening act. She could host. We'll see. Hopefully I'm not sick. But yes, Kyle's always there for me if needed. Um, let's see. Will there be a TGA 10 year concert stream next year to celebrate the 10 years? I'm not sure what we're going to do. I will kind of keep you posted um, what happens there, but nothing to announce right now. And I don't think the, the Hollywood Bowl concert, I don't think we're going to do every year, but we would love to do it again in the future. Um, will there be merchandise this year? I think there actually are some Game Awards shirts or uh, sweatshirts that are coming, so stay tuned for that. What is the cutoff date for eligible games? Games have to be released by. Um, I believe it's this Friday, the 18th, is the cutoff. I think that's whatever Friday is, the 18th? I can't keep track. Um, but sort of the, this the game's have to be out by this Friday, or they would bump to sort of next year's eligibility. Um, do I have high anxiety when doing these events? Sure. Um, I mean, we've been doing them for a long time, so you're used to the process. But yeah, I always want it to go well. I mean, I have anxiety about the nominees tomorrow, hoping that it's going to go well and people will be happy with, with what's nominated and, you know, all works out. The website works and things like that. So, yeah, we have a great team, though, uh, that really helps us to put the show together. So I feel, you know, really confident that we're going to hopefully have a great show for you guys. Um, how are you and the team doing? Thank you for asking. Um, we, uh, we're doing well. We're, we're really busy. We're excited about tomorrow, and the next three and a half weeks are going to be crazy. It's a very busy time of year, but I love coming to chat with you guys. What's going on with the show? Um, uh, 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 I had a talk to you for a while. We had a run in, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 years ago. At, uh, Spike PGAs, but yeah, since then we've hung out. I actually visited Joe. I went to Joe's house in Austin, I don't know, probably, probably eight years ago now or something like that, and we hung out. So yeah, Joe's, Joe's a good guy. Um, love to see him at the Game Awards one year. Uh, all right, I got to bounce here, guys, um, and get on with some other stuff to prepare for tomorrow. But um, thank you so much for hanging out. This was really fun to kind of chat about all things Game Awards and uh, get ready for the nominee stream tomorrow. Uh, that'll be happening, as I said, at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, 5 p.m. GMT. So um, we'd love to sort of uh, have you guys there. Um, and then you'll get to tell us what you think. And by the way, on our channel, we have this cool thing. I don't know if you're, if you're on desktop. I don't know if it's on mobile yet. We have this thing called Twitch Predicts the Game Awards, if, an extension. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's on the right-hand panel. Um, and that's going to be active tomorrow. Uh, and it's going to let you actually vote. If you're watching on YouTube, this is not a YouTube thing. It's a Twitch thing, sorry, but it's a uh, 
let you kind of predict and vote what you think is going to win all the categories. We've got our Discord server firing up. we got a lot of cool things we're doing around the show this year, and uh, there's something truly crazy that we're doing that we'll talk about in the middle of the week, which is going to be really fun and something brand new that I'm very excited about around the show this year. Um, not tied to a big reveal or uh, the nominees. It's just a different thing we're doing, which I'm excited about, and I'll tell you guys about that. Um, anyways, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for your support. Uh, it's going to be, I think, hopefully a good day tomorrow. With excitement around the, the nominees, and uh, we're working hard on the show. So even if I'm not here streaming every day, know that behind the scenes our team is working incredibly hard to bring a special Game Awards to you on Thursday, December 7th, and there will be much more to share um, in the days and weeks ahead. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow for the nominee announcement the Game Awards 2023. All right? See you guys. Take care. Bye. Okay, they said they wouldn't do this, right? But there was the hardware certification in South Korea, right? Then, follow me here, Phronix caught Valve sneaking code names into the Linux kernel. Final Fantasy VII fans know that Sephiroth and Aerith had a bit of a run-in, and then we all know Aerith was a Valve code name for the- The <sighs> Okay, fine. Valve just launched an OLED Steam Deck, and I know what you guys are thinking. That sounds great, but didn't they say not to expect a new Steam Deck for years? Well, that's what we heard, but it's not actually what they said. We can talk about that later. For now, this thing is freaking awesome. I am talking larger, incredible HDR screen, massively better battery life, three times faster game downloads, more included storage, and get this, you guys, without raising the price. Take that, Sony. So get your pre-order in now, obviously, but also stay tuned because on top of all the improvements that they highlighted for us to talk about in our review, there's more that they wanted us to discover on our own. And those turned out to be very interesting. Like our sponsor. Origin PC. Configure your next-gen gaming desktop or laptop and save big. Save up to $900 off select laptops and up to $275 off select desktops at the link below. There's no other way to put it. This thing is beautiful. And this is not just a Steam Deck with an OLED display. This is a Steam Deck with a custom HDR OLED display. The first we've ever seen in a handheld with a rated peak brightness of 1,000 nits in HDR, a rated million to one contrast ratio, and 110% coverage of the DCI-P3 color space. It is even bigger than the original, coming in at 7.4 inches rather than the original 7, which they pulled off by shrinking the bezels rather than by increasing the size of the unit, making it feel even more immersive. 
Oh, and did I mention that it now does 90 Hertz refresh rate for smoother animations and more responsive inputs? I mean, after the mildly disappointing screen in the original deck, this is everything that I could have asked for. Well, almost everything. We're still stuck at 800p resolution, but what blew my mind about that was how hard it was to tell. I mean, I could have sworn that it was higher, but I guess that just goes to show you how much our perception is impacted by other factors, like brightness, contrast, and color reproduction. Valve nailed this thing. Like the color in sRGB mode is dead on with even more impressive saturation in HDR. It's easier on the eyes in low light conditions and the contrast ratio is functionally infinite. So let me just put it this way. This thing pops. The only thing I could ask for would be support for variable refresh rate on the built-in screen. But Valve says that this just wasn't possible, not because they didn't do the software work, it'll work on an external display, but because the internal display uses a MIPI interface. When I press them on why they didn't use EDP, which would support VRR, they were actually kind of evasive. So what we suspect is that Valve is still not shipping the kinds of volumes that would justify a completely custom screen, putting them at the mercy of what's kind of available on the market. And by that I mean that based on the identical subpixel layout, we suspect that they're using the same source that Nintendo does for the Switch OLED, which is important because most sources that we can find suspect that Nintendo is using a MIPI derivative for their displays. Now to be clear, we don't have any proof of this, but if we're right, it's probably a really good thing based on that recent video looking at OLED Switch burn-in. Yeah, it will eventually, but only if abused. So, ah, fingers crossed. That's not me, but, but. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're practically yelling at your screen by now. Hey, Valve said they weren't gonna make a new Steam Deck, not for years. What gives with this? But that's not quite how it went down. There were a bunch of articles earlier this year after veteran Valve programmer Pierre Lugrefe discussed how Valve would need to do a ton of work to re-engineer the internals to make an OLED screen work. And then another round more recently of him saying, ah, he doesn't foresee the performance target for Steam Deck changing for the next couple of years, which we interpreted to mean that no new hardware was coming. But if you read the actual quotes from him, rather than skimming the headlines, he never actually said we wouldn't get a mid-generation upgrade. We just assumed that, and we all know what happens when we do that. And get this, not only is the new screen better, it's thinner, which carves out some precious space behind it for a larger battery. Steam Deck OLED, I'm not sure if Valve calls it that, but we're gonna call it that, boasts a 50 watt hour battery, which Valve says should charge faster and last up to 50% longer than the old one which seems like some pretty questionable math on the surface, especially given that the included charging brick has identical specs. But our results on both of these counts were right in line with their claims. And the why of that was one of the things that we got to investigate on our own. You see, some of these gains come from the size of the battery, some from a newer chemistry, some come from the more efficient screen, and some come from the new silicon that AMD spun for this version. Now, before you get too excited, Valve was very clear that the new six nanometer die shrunk processor is intended to perform just like the previous seven nanometer version. Their exact words were, often equivalent, never worse, but, that doesn't sound like not better. And as we've learned, there's as much to be gleaned in what Valve doesn't say as there is in what they do say. Now, it's beyond the scope of this video, but I would be particularly interested to see what kind of results the hypermyelin community can get from this new die alongside Valve's new underclocking features. We're gonna talk about out-of-the-box performance, though, starting with Returnal. Running the built-in benchmark at 1280 by 800 on the low preset, we got virtually identical performance, with only the maximum FPS being significantly different from the original deck. Same story going out for a rip on our favorite Kanakistan track in F123. Similar enough that most people wouldn't notice it day to day, but an improvement that is well beyond our margin of error measurements. I'll take it, or at least I would until something weird happened. In Cyberpunk 2077, 
we saw a significant performance drop. Using the Steam Deck preset in both cases, our minimum FPS was quite a bit lower than the original deck. The good news, however, is that average FPS wasn't impacted, so what we suspect is that the new APU was stuck in a lower power state at the start of the benchmark and then ramped up, which is good because that should be easy enough to fix in the coming weeks. Or, I mean, probably days at the rate that Valve has been pushing out patches to take the Steam Deck from the unfinished state that it was in when I first reviewed it to the polished experience that it is today. Now, given that our focus is on the new hardware, we aren't gonna get into a ton of depth about what Valve's done with SteamOS lately, but the incredible work that they've done on HDR and color management in Linux is just the tip of the iceberg. Once you manage to drag your eyes away from the new screen, you might notice the thumbsticks. Before you ask, no, they're not Hall Effect, but there's a new texture and a slightly different profile that most people around the office seemed to prefer. When they were asked, well, why didn't you go with Hall Effect sticks? Seems like such a no-brainer upgrade. Valve said that ultimately, they were unsatisfied with their reliability at this time. So fingers crossed for the future, but not today. Other tweaks to the outside, uh, colors of the button labels and the bases of the thumbsticks are different. Power button is now a nice, almost LTT orange. Power LED is a WRGB diode to give you more feedback about your charge state. And the screws on the back of the deck are Torx rather than Phillips. Very nice. but. That's about it for the exterior changes, and it looks like the dimensions are identical, which raises a big question for you. Will your OG deck accessories still fit? Now, Dbrand was desperate to know, which makes sense given their line of work, and we thought about just lending them a unit, but I was all like, hey, I have the power in this relationship for a change. Why don't we charge them to test it and then do it on camera where everyone can see it? I actually don't know the correct way to put this on, so I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> doesn't seem like anything is different, but just because it doesn't seem different doesn't mean it's exactly right necessarily. Micro SD slot, perfect. Rear buttons, perfect. Top buttons, LEDs, all visible, all accessible. Looks good to me. Obviously, if the kill switch goes on, then their other accessories will fit, but what the heck. If you don't need the kickstand, there's also their universal mount. Go ahead and pop that on. Kind of looks like Valve's Valve. Lots of people use these for external battery banks, but you can mount pretty much anything to your Steam Deck with it. Oh, look at that. Wow. Screwdriver. Now, one thing that's not going to go as smoothly is the screen protector. Tuesday has a bigger one. Because it's only a bezel reduction, the actual piece of glass is the same size. And I'm sure you will do a really, really good job of applying it instead of just doing it in a hurry like I'm doing because I'm on camera. Oh man, that's way off. Uh, just, just don't look that close. They include two though because they assume you'll screw one up, I, I guess. Oh, this is hilarious. The notes from Dbrand say, don't need to actually install. Probably because they knew that I would screw it up if I did it in a hurry. Anyway, the point is, thanks Dbrand for sending this stuff over. We'll have links in the description along with the new Steam Deck and everything else we feature. Now at this point, you know everything you need to know about this thing as a consumer. But for tinkerers, you're gonna wanna stay tuned because internally a lot more has changed than you would probably think. Starting with something that would be really easy to overlook. These screws now go into metal screw bosses rather than just into the plastic housing, which is great if you want to get into or out of your deck multiple times, say for example to upgrade your storage. And speaking of, Valve has made a sincere effort to reduce the number of different types of screws involved, making repairs and modifications a much more pleasant task. That doesn't mean, however, that intergenerational compatibility is going to be perfect. The motherboard has changed, and the daughter boards on both sides of the unit have been reshaped and redesigned, with the thumbstick boards now having these little wings? I'm not sure exactly what to call them, but they're a mounting point for the switches for the shoulder buttons, which means that any third-party replacement joysticks are gonna have to be redesigned before they're gonna work in the new deck. The battery is still glued in place, but Valve says that they didn't go hog wild with the glue this time, so battery replacements should be a little less terrible. And a dedicated DSP is present now to take some load off of the APU for audio processing, with Valve claiming that the new unit delivers refined haptics, cleaner audio, improved bass response, and better stereo separation. We didn't really find any of these to be game-changing, but they are certainly welcome improvements. 
Superficially, the new cooling setup looks quite a lot like what we saw in the refreshed Steam Decks that they've been shipping in recent months, but on closer inspection, the mounting points are actually different and there's a lot more open space under the shroud with far fewer components on the main board getting in the way of airflow. Our acoustic chamber is still in the works, but even without it, we observed a noticeable reduction in fan noise, and that's with the system running cooler overall. Under that cooling system, we had some more big spec upgrades. Like the original, our new APU comes with 16 gigs of LPDDR5, but this time it's 6,400 megatransfer per second compared to the 5,500 of the original. That is a huge increase and explains a significant amount of the performance uplift. And there's a new custom Wi-Fi module that had us peaking in the real world at around 650 megabits per second when downloading games on our Wi-Fi 6E network here at the lab. That is outstanding and a huge difference maker. If you've ever downloaded a big game on your deck, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Now, the wireless module is still soldered down, which is a bit of a bummer, especially because looking back at the original and seeing what a big improvement this is, wouldn't it have been nice if that one hadn't been soldered? But according to Valve, this was for good reason and allowed them to create a specialized interface between the Wi-Fi module and the APU, which has the benefit of moving the power circuitry onto the main board rather than the Wi-Fi card and of allowing them to run a dedicated antenna for Bluetooth 5.3. Also, to its credit, the new Wi-Fi chip is at least soldered further away from the M.2 slot for the SSD, which should hopefully result in less interference. And speaking of storage, let's talk about the updated lineup for a moment here. The new top of the line includes one terabyte of NVMe storage and has the same anti-glare etching on the glass as the original. It also includes this new two-part case that will help save some room in your backpack. If you don't happen to have a nice tech-focused bag that has room for multiple laptops and a Steam Deck, like ours does, LTCStore.com. The base model is now 256 gigabytes for the same price as before, a quadrupling of storage, not to mention the speed upgrade, but this one has a catch. It's the old LCD version, and not just with the same screen, without any of the new upgrades. At least that's the case for now. So um, I would probably avoid that one, and I'd be looking at the V8. It's $20 more than last gen, but it gets double the storage at that price and has all the new goodies. All it lacks are the anti-glare coating, which to me is not the end of the world, and a two-part case. It's a smoking deal. There's also a fourth member of the family, the limited edition of the one terabyte that has an exclusive transparent shell, but that thing is so limited that Valve wouldn't even let us borrow one, even though they totally took our color scheme. We had to drive all the way down to Seattle to get this footage of it in person. It's like, you know guys, you can just tell me if you want to hang out. And I'll say sure, as long as you support our team making great videos. Kind of like our sponsor. Grammarly. Here at Linus Media Group, we're committed to constantly improving our writing using all the tools at our disposal, like coffee, liberal arts degrees, and Grammarly. They offer generative AI assistance, helping us brainstorm, outline, revise, and polish our content until it's as smooth as I am when I go off script and effortlessly think of normal human things to say. To access Grammarly's advanced AI features, all you gotta do is click on Grammarly's logo. And sure, if we're ever stuck on writing, Grammarly can help us get started with ideas, outlines, and even tips, but that's only the beginning. Grammarly's reply feed Uh, you hated uh, BFA. Okay, so yeah. I think PVE was better in uh, in Shadow. It, yeah, no, PVP was better at the beginning of Shadowlands than it was. Actually, I don't know. Like the beginning of BFA was also pretty good for PVP too. Yeah. 
fuck. I, I don't know. Like, yeah, maybe... Maybe they were both bad. I think they were both bad. Yeah, they... Yeah. Because I'm trying to think. Like, I, I don't even really well, feel like... Well, for you, I had Divine Soul. Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. A.3 was good. Yeah, I, I think that, that the last patch of BFA was good, though. You're right about that. Damn, people are dying. Just don't die. Yeah, like the uh, the corruption gear and everything was really good. I liked it a lot. Echo, Victor, Echo. It, was, it was good when you could buy, you could target your support. Yeah. Before that, it kind of sucked. It was so weird that they didn't let you do that in the beginning. Like, that was like, that was never wow was at its worst. It's like all of these like artificial restrictions and like stuff like that. That's what really made it, like, super awful to play. I wonder if they're going to try to do that again. Because, like, they kind of stopped doing that with Diablo as well. Who fucking knows what they got in store, dog? Yeah, true. Vendor rotation, waiting his content. Dude, I remember, like, it was so popular just to shit on WoW. Whereas, like, now I feel like people, like, WoW is in, like, a relatively decent spot. So, like, it's not quite as popular, but, like, for the longest time, that was, like, all that we would do is just shit on WoW. Yeah, it was fun, too. Like, it was, yeah. We'd spend whole streams doing that. It was just, yeah, about how bad of a game it is. Ooh, we yeah. got, uh, we got cloak. I need the cloak. I need the cloak. Uh, I need, uh, I need this. Uh, I need, like, bro, where's my tier set? I'm actually upset, man. Where the fuck is my loot? Docking confirmed. Dispatching ground crew. Good to have you, Commander. Okay. Hopefully I get something that I went out of this. I went something I get out of this. Whatever the fuck. A little drop after months. Bro, like, I'm actually getting so unlucky with gear. Like, I think I'm being cheated. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. That's a really nice mace. Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot all about this. What did people think about this raid? Like, did people like, uh, uh Avarice? They loved it. Really? Yeah, I thought it was okay. I, I don't feel like it was, like, that much better or worse than Vault of the Incarnates. I thought they were both, like, okay. I thought Razageth was a way better in boss, though. Like, and this is, like, I, I never did Mythic, right? I'm just saying, like, from, like, a casual perspective. Like, I, I liked Razageth a lot more. Circuit all shit? Yeah, I just couldn't see what was happening, you know? But I think, like, that's kind of an example, right? Where, like, it, it's kind of hard to see that I was in, like, that red stuff because there's so much other red stuff. I, I, I wish that Blizzard prioritized visual clarity over visuals. Because I think that's kind of what they care about more. They care about, like, making it look good rather than, like, making it easy to understand. Sark is a sick fight. I mean, part of it, I think, is cool. I, I don't know if it's, like, you know, amazing, but, like, it's... I mean, it is what it is, right? It's like that. Like, where do you know, like... It's so hard to tell, because even, like, being zoomed out all the way, like, I hardly even know what's happening there. Same issue with Overwatch, just a Blizzard thing? It is a Blizzard thing. It absolutely is, because, like, other companies don't have this problem. It's mainly just Blizzard, where, like, they don't care about, like, making it easy to understand what's happening. Okay, here we go. So, like, this guy drops good loot, so everybody, um... Oh, nice. Retail's so fast, so annoying the amount of stuff on the screen. Oh, yeah, there's, like, it, it's insanely complex. There's way too much shit. This boss is free. Swirls are terrible readability. Just use the outline circles. Yeah. 
Yeah, like those are things I wish they would improve with the game. Like, I, I don't know if they ever really will, but that's at least, like, kind of what I would hope for. Uh, well, there he is. I mean, fuck, guys. Like, I think I probably should get behind him. You're all standing. Hope to see you again, Commander. Yeah. Right, it is, it is a rumor opinion. And like, if I played the game all the time, like, it would be easier for me to see these things. I, I just don't think that should be like a vector of difficulty, right? Where like, part of the difficulty is like being able to see what's happening on the screen. I, I, I don't like... Whenever I, whenever I do see what's happening, like, I, I don't ever like feel good for like beating it, I guess. We're taking off last last popping on. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't... Uh, again, like, being good at the game is important, but, like, the game being fun is more important. And I think that's really where I'm getting at, is I think it's just more important for the game to be easy to read and easy to understand, rather than just being, like, punishing and, like, really hard for people where it's, like, hard to see things. Like, it, it, I just feel like that's kind of, like, a, a weird form of difficulty. Turn spell sensitivity down. Holy shit, it's, it's inducing. Yeah, it's just a lot going on. I'll, I'll, I'll always try to soak one of these since I'm useless anyway. Good game equals fun. Yeah, exactly. UI's fucked. Don't really like changing things. I mean, I don't think like my UI is going to change the way a spell effect on the ground is, right? Like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. No, well, I mean, I, actually, I do know. It, it won't. It won't do anything. Arbitrary difficulty. People are supposed to move out or in the back. Overpowered stomp. Let me guess it knocks you back. That's it? Jesus, this is easy. What the fuck? Wow. And so, like, it's just crazy how much damage, how much more damage people do now. Like, what the fuck? got out of hand like people are doing nice. 145k like what were people doing on like razagath like cool uh, i guess we stack up for that like i don't understand what to do with that 90 to 100k yeah 100k most i feel like it was less than 100k even oh no no now now that i'm thinking back on it yeah somewhere around 100k and I think, like, this this next patch coming out, like, people are going to be doing, like, I'd say, like, 400k DPS. Like, it, it's going to more than double, like, maybe 500k. It'll be, like, Mists of Pandaria. That was a good expansion. Oh, oh, I need this. I need this. Uh, I, I need, I need, I need the head. I need head. Uh, let me need that and need this, too. Okay, fist weapon. I need the fist weapon. I need those. And then the trinket. I don't need the trinket. Okay, I think I actually need to loot him, too. Hopefully I win one of them. I'm winning with this roll. What's this? Oh, I got one. Nice. What are you doing? True. All right, let's go. Uh, let me use this. Actually, where are we? Oh, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you very Wait, much. Wait, what the fuck? What? Dude, where's your dono go for a pizza or a sweater? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or a one dollar equals one donut. That was a really popular one. Like, I remember whenever I... Oh, shit. Uh, whenever I did that... Uh, dude, I must have gotten... Uh, like, it was like... I got five hundred dollars that day. It was nuts. Damn. I don't need that. Thank you. What a, what a time to be alive. Okay, I'm gonna use the helmet here, and then I should be able to equip it, right? Ooh, it got a socket, too. Oh, fuck yeah. That's a honey bun. Yep, there it is. Actually, yeah. Uh, well, I don't have honey bun. I have, the, I have these. Any maggots? No, not yet. Probably in a couple of days, though. Yeah, they're 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 coming on. Imagine tier sets in Season of Discovery. 
Yeah, they could have like a Rep Paladin tier set or something. Bro, stop fucking with me. No, stop fucking. No, you're fucking with me. Stop. No, I'm not. I'm not. They're probably yes, you are, dog. But if they did, though, that would be that would be pretty poggers. That would be cool. That would be yeah, pretty poggers. Only if they'll ever do that. All hands to battle stations. I repeat, all hands to battle stations. You have I need more than gunner. one gunner. We have two Alex gunners, the gunner. but you, I, there's nothing on the starboard side. Yeah, th there's a gun in the front of the ship. If you can, you can uh, shoot the the one that's in the front of the ship. Oh, there's. Here we go, boy crew. Let's check it out together. I flew off. What? <laughs> how? How do you fall, Joe? Look at Joe over here. Wait, how do you, do you even get that when we're all over here fucking learning out of the ship? Joe somehow outside of his ship, suffering Shit. from fucking cold exhaustion, is freezing in the depths of space. And I'm dead. <laughs> Did you depressurize? Chat, I. No, oh see, my I god, I, I just. I don't think we're gonna survive with a crew member like OJ. Look, we're I up over here. Like I can't. I can't I go to space with this man. <laughs> can't win with him. Can't. Can't. Well, can't do it. 
And I'm dead. Oh my god, this is gonna be wild. <laughs> How did you even do this? See what happened was. What happened? I forgot my boots. <laughs> Pick up the inscribed. Wow. Power on. <coughs> Enter the airlock. Oh, this is probably what Joe did. Yeah, the next. Going a lot faster than me. I'm just doing a little. You know what's funny? Uh, there was a uh, there was a safety measure to make sure uh, you don't uh, you don't <laughs> jettison out without the jetpack, but apparently somehow OJ just managed to get out without the jetpack. I think I don't need no stinking jetpack. <laughs> and I just flew into space. <laughs> she wasn't clear. You went out without a jetpack? I didn't need a jetpack, you don't need it. Go out there, see what happens. Unbelievable jetpack. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna let her tell me what to do. <laughs> and I die. Turn to a space popsicle. Navigate to the repair plate that was inside the container and retrieve it. See, she said, you are good at following orders. It consumes your spare oxygen when you use it. Oh shit, we can go outside of our ship? How the fuck does this indie early access base game make me feel more like I'm in space and exploring in five minute tutorial than Starfield does in 120 hours? ship way more than my Starfield ship. I feel attached to it since I repaired it. See that part? I repaired that part. As we learn how to play, let's let's go against something very easy. We're going to destroy hollow assembler cores. Good destroy. Destroy. Assembler cores shatter into smaller assembler fragments. Assembler cores and fragments create other hollows when destroyed. Fucker hollow. All right. All right, chat. What are our success chances of success? Well, I, I chose me. a non-combat mission. Oh. Against I have I'm not we're not fighting anybody. We're fighting. <laughs> well, we're blowing things up, but I don't think they fire back. Why does the spawn sound sound like we're fisting a jar of mayonnaise? Yeah, because we're all like clones. Yeah. Is mayonnaise clones? We're homunculi. Well, first, I guess we got to get accustomed to the ship. Maybe we shouldn't have gone in the destroyer since we have no experience in it. Don't worry, I'm coming. I'm gonna fix it. Here's an arc shield. Here's a power drain. My job. Oh man, we're not gonna. We're not gonna. Do shit, oh god. <laughs> Who turned the ship off? off. <laughs> <laughs> Who is turning the ship on I'm and off? I'm turning it on. Someone's well, turning it off. That's my oh, job. My god. Like the grease man. <laughs> Alright, if I'm the helm, you get your grease off of me. <laughs> I think this ship is too big, gentlemen. We should probably. The ventilators. <laughs> I saw that too. Oh my god. I, I'm gonna take us back home. Where's what? the hairlock? Oh, I found the hairlock. I don't right. think we can handle this ship. I think we need to go back and get the starter Look, ship. Look, we can handle a nah, big one. Nah, we are extremely qualified. We are. Very good flyers. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. I'm at the airlock. I'm ready to go. Send me out into space. <laughs> I don't think we're going to space. Uh, I, my job is to go out into space. It's my only job. Uh, this is your captain, uh, uh, Joe Vargas, and uh, I've got no void jump charge. Can I have my engineer charge the void drive, please? Oh, Jesus went into space. Uh, Echo type has left the ship. <laughs> Void charge failed. I'm, I'm charging up the void charge. 
Wait, wait a minute. Why am I doing your job, OJ? OJ is in space. We cannot use the void drive. Wait, what is he doing? He's, he's floating around the ship. He's in the front of our ship right now. <laughs> Yes, I see yes. you. You're coming straight. We can see an outline of you Aww. through the ship. Damn, yeah, I was trying to go in front of the ship. You're right here in front. Look at my fucking screen. Okay. <laughs> Get the fucking side, Joe. God damn it! This is not how we start. <laughs> uh, going back inside. Cruise mode. I gotta go back inside. There's I mean, a door. No. Oh my god! You, I'm you gonna go leave without you. You go back to the porthole, OJ. <laughs> Right, I've OJ got can't no find the port charge. Oh yeah, I, I get that to pro. Yep. Requires engines yes. charge. You better get in. The void jump is charging. Are you he's in? not. He's not in. He's completely at the wrong spot. You better okay, hurry up. Go go to where. Both you better hurry are. up. Find the get, get in the uh, fucking go. ship. <laughs> 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 Okay, he's in. He's in the ship. <laughs> Shut the door. Okay. You made it Changing with twenty percent. Please be seated yeah. to avoid yeah. involuntary ejection. The ship is too big for us. We need I'm to go too back. old for involuntary erections. Here we go. <laughs> Safely made it. You hear that warning sound? <laughs> Sit the fuck down. Uh oh. One. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> His <laughs> brain went red. Yeah. What is I see OJ on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> is Joe dead? Yep. No. I couldn't find oh, ouch! I, I, couldn't went, find I got up to go see where he was. Yeah, I went to go look at OJ. Well, I couldn't find a seat. Hold on, can I revive y'all? I was looking to see if I could revive him, and I took more damage. Alright. Uh, can you revive him? No, I don't think so. That's it. Maybe put us into a flesh pit? Holy <laughs> shit. Well, <laughs> Alex still has a little bit of health. Yeah, I'm sturdier than these two. I was trying to find a seat. I was looking to just... I was trying to be the cameraman. <laughs> Ping self. Alright, I'm, I'm coming back. Right, yeah, I mean... well, because our biomass stores are running low. You're going to need to re... Do biomass stores. What if we fuse together? Oh no. We save out on cost. <laughs> it, it would tell OJ if he's in the gun seat. If he's oh the fuck! Whoa, what was that? I don't know. Some flying asteroids hit us on the on the port oh, side. Fine. Got some kind That's of That's a warning. bad sound. Yeah, yeah. The, where's where's our biomass? I think we're all right. Now you're doing damage. Oh! You know we have more than one weapon system, right? Yeah. Here comes proximity mines are incoming, Joe. You don't see the purple? Oh, Jesus. Bro, what the fuck is all this shit? Well, this weapon system's offline. Are we getting shot from something? I'm turning on your sh uh, your shields for the ship. Oof! Holy shit! Where's that coming from? Is, it is this an ambush? We are in danger! <laughs> all hands to battle stations. I repeat, oh, shoot, yeah, all hands to battle stations. <laughs> I need more than gunner. one gunner. We have two Alex gunners, gunner. but you, I, there's nothing on the starboard side. Yeah, th there's a gun in the front of the ship. If you can, if you can uh, shoot the the one that's in the front of the ship. Oh, there it is. Okay, powering it on. Power overload. Circuit breaker struggling. Act now to avoid system failure. Uh, we have a power overload. None of you motherfuckers are acting. Uh, I'll disable the life support side shield then. So I can see Joe and Alex are just sitting in the seat. The only one doing anything is Zero. I'm shooting the mines that are coming towards us. Yeah. Not even. I've killed a cube and a bunch of little ships. All right. Whole integrity. Oh, where is this gunfire coming from? Oh shit! Fuck! Yeah, Alex, get those fucking things! 
There's so many! I'm pulling out of here! Jesus fucking Christ. Where where are the goddamn fragments that we need to blow up? All the triangles? Blowing up all these little fighters that are shooting us. Oh, they're little fighters. Okay, so our hull integrity is at 75%. Where's our shield? I have to disable some of the shield so then our power doesn't overload. Uh, oof, oof, oof. There is a major hull breach at the top of the ship. Can somebody get out there? Zero. Joe, can you get out there? I'm shooting the ships. Oh, fine, zero. You think you can get out uh, there? Where's our, uh, what's it called? Actually, you know, I think we're all right, because if you go out there, will you float away? No, I think your boots are, are like, magnetized. Well, he's so got to have the jet, or that, um, suit before it goes out there. <laughs> the jet, yeah. Make sure you pick it up. <laughs> you will fly Are out. we destroying anything? Yeah, I've yes. shot a, a bunch of fighters. Oh, and a few oh no! Planes. That... I'm I'm turning on all shields to help you guys out. I think our a main objective are not the triangles, but rather the uh, cubes. Cubes. If you can shoot these cubes. Joe, can you find the fucking front gun so you can start doing shit? I am doing stuff. No, you're not. I'm watching you. You haven't even barely shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm seeing Alex fire this whole time. Chat, you see the fucking starboard side is firing constantly? My gun's overheating. Alright, we got one of them. Hole integrity is below 50%. There's a lot of mines around us. I'm gonna try to fall back. Oh my god. Joe, it's up to you. You see all those purples? It's too late. Reinforcements are inbound. When our whole integrity hits 10%, I want somebody to charge the drive so we can get the fuck out of here. But we're at 40%. We're good. Oh! <laughs> I hit every fucking mine! Until our hole is at 40%. <laughs> it's, our, our, our ass slammed into about 20 mines at once. Yeah, that ship is way too big for us. We're not gonna level because we didn't get anything completed. Nice. Can we get at least a participation trophy or something? No participation trophy. There's what's interesting is there's only oh, I the lot the right now that's you. Yep. Zero. Basically, at the map screen, there's four chairs, so that should be enough for everybody if we want to sit there. Is everybody sitting? Sitting. Yep. All right, let's go. Ready? Ready to fly. Mm. <laughs> Two. One. One. Jump. God help us all. Jesus left on the and spit facts. <laughs> We're in the system. You're hearing this guy, right? Yes. Oh, cool. I think maybe we we can come out and investigate and go inside. Anomalous jump signature detected. Uh, where did they jump in? Uh, AJ, press tab real quick. Tab? Yes. What does tab do? It shows hey. all our names. Zero? Yeah. Just dead! Where are you? Uh, I just told you I went to go for the spacewalk and then you immediately started uh, accelerating. <laughs> Yeah, but don't your boots gra uh, like lock on or something? No. I would have... What? So I have to be completely stopped for you to repair anything? 
Correct. That's usually how ships work. <laughs> That's fucking bullshit. Not with Mac boots. We can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> we got chewing gum in the bottom of our. You think he is a Sokotano? <laughs> All right, guys. One final one here. Uh, if we can get this. Closer. I'm trying. First relay down. Alpha, alpha, alpha. Oh, looks like you're, oh, you're good. Oh, fuck. Also having defects. Preparing your gun salads. Yeah, you did something to the, yeah, my the accuracy that just fucked my gun up. Alpha. Shooting it. Too late. Too late. But, we blew it up. Get out of here. Void jumps in the next sector. Go toggle cruise mode. Toggle cruise. Toggle cruise mode. That's what I heard. Toggle cruise mode. You start sprinting for no reason. <laughs> yeah. All right, I need void jump. I'm sitting down. Charge the down? void, please. One sec, running all the way over there. Shoot the mines. I don't know what cruise mode does. Autopilot. It just looked like it was going in a circle with me. Okay, it's charging. Hole integrity at 50%. Oh, there's thruster boosters too. Where? Uh, right next to where the warp drive is. I have to charge them so then you can use thruster boosters for speed. I was wondering why. Is that fires? What are those little fires on? Oh, my. Be seated. Are you sitting? Sitting. Sitting? Zero? got our first victory what do we get commonly bought engineer to apprentice to apprentice to unemployment <laughs> going backwards <laughs> oh my loot box is filled with shards Mine is party. I got, crying about it. I got that sounds alright. I got shards. Shards, I got crying about it. Why did I get crying about it? I got desiccate. Shards? Well, that is that a skin? I, I it looks like a skin. Hopefully. Uh, I think I have a skin too. Well, guys, I really, really like uh, Void Crew. I think it's really cool, uh, especially for an indie game. I, uh, I think it's worth twenty bucks, easy. Um, I would definitely buy it. I love the whole idea of, you know, Star, Star Trek. Here's Joe in front of oh, me hello, crying. Trevor. How can I help you? <laughs> Impressions. All right, guys, what do you think? Uh, a little buggy, but I said uh, a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked you could go outside your ship and actually do stuff. Yeah, that was cool. Only Starfield had that kind of technology. <laughs> yeah, it does make me feel like I'm actually doing a ship. I love how, like, co -op is you repair cool on the inside and the outside. Ship building. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say really, uh, Alex. Uh, what's what's the big problem? I think you experienced it the most. Oh, right? this. I mean, we're in early access, so the servers are bad. They're they're pretty bad. Yeah, but what, I mean, what it is is lag. Sometimes yeah. yes. we were like firing the guns, and it would like take a little while. Yeah. Or but, on my screen, it would look like y'all are wildly firing to the right when you actually were hitting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it. For a $20 game, you're getting a ton of different features. I'm curious to see what, like, the mission structure, mm -hmm. all of them are going to look like if there is a kind of a story mode. But it's, you know, we, we played so much worse that cost 60 and this is 20 bucks. Yeah. So definitely get this if you're in, if you're a fan of uh, space games. The only thing with these games is you got to grab some friends to make it a, as fun as possible. Now, I would say it's good even with, I would want to do three, right? You can, there's sips here that you can go down to one or two, 
this lone sentry. That might be fun, you know. Uh, but I'd say you want at minimum two, but the sweet spot, I think, is three and four players. So, all right. Well, that's Void Crew. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Okay. Hmm. I done convinced myself. Seek fluid intake. Um. So I think we'll do that again. Fighters. I don't know if I want the crit hits last this time. What is danger during rest? You can change the difficulty from the save you had. You do not need to restart. Ah, I feel like that's cheating a little bit, though, don't you think? You can get attacked during rest. Okay. I'm gonna do the the bring passport. I like region lock. Let's do region lock. One mistake and you're dead. I love it. I don't think I, I want to do Iron Man. Because I, I want to like... I want to I want to continue moving forward. So... Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna get to choose all this. this. Yeah, this is actually awesome. Okay. Also, I'm never gonna use taunt again. Never. I, I, maybe, like, maybe one person. I definitely want more people with first aid. But this will be Nuriel. We're gonna bring Nuriel back in. We'll start, we'll start with the mods. Nuriel will be our tank. Nuri, you're gonna have guard. 2% base guard. Are any negative traits like located in? Must consume alcohol with every meal to be happy. I don't really need her to crit. He's not going to be doing damage. So let's do that. Let's do that. Um, and I think I am going to give her month. Oh, I feel like we got this. Alright, uh, I'm going to be the archer. So let's make Ko the archer. Yeah. I'm going to give him pain. You critties. Give you some extra dex. We're going to make it so you don't carry much. Because other people can do it for me. Yes. Oh wait, can I not make that for you? She reduces con, but I feel like that's a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea for doing it. Oh man, that's a horrible idea. I need a big beer. Here's our ranger. What did that wrath? You just flat deck something with no downside. Uh, this is going to be Agamir. And then we got a swordsman. It's going to be our big two hand swordsman. We're going to give them wrath because they're going to be great. We'll give you strength. We'll also see if I can give you a critical hit. Yeah. That would be less carrying attacks. Okay. Who is this going to be? This is going to be Red Eyed Monster. Red Eyed Monster. I like him. We'll call, we'll call him. Oh, here we go. Red Eyed. Yes. Something. Yes, we always change. Red Eyed, that sound good? How's that? I should make red a glutton? I probably should. Yeah. The red eye. Right. And I'm sorry, but we're bringing this one back. We're not changing. You can't, you can't really fix perfection, you know? You can't really fix perfection. Um, on, on. how in the last run I'm like things are going moderately well but not even really well so let's go ahead and just restart on the hardest difficulty and get our ass completely kicked in front of 9,000 people was like a good plan great yeah good okay, okay, yeah. anyway for those just tuning in we are restarting on the hardest difficulty now that I have the smallest idea about what I'm doing I figured this would be fun to you know just see how terrible I can be at this game Thank you for joining us. Red, we can go ahead and make a new, like this is gonna be the playthrough, Red. So if we wanna make like a, like a co-learns War Tales for the normal run, and then this can be like the War Tales run. This is happening. Okay. This, is, this is the reels run. Everything is for reels now. All right, Nuri, go ahead. 
This will be Colord's War Tales Part 2. <laughs> not, not wrong. We're going to engage the archer. Ow. Hundred percent hit there. And fanatic. Uh, okay. Although that does go to get around our thing, which required that, I will say I do find it funny where N fanatic says we should call the first playthrough co f's around and the second playthrough co finds out. Um, that's not that's not the worst names for those two playthroughs. Save that for now. Tank should we probably should go ahead and blow it on our tank. Alright. Now we are on the hardest difficulty. And we are gonna make this. It makes me want to pull out the little head I have left. Oh, Barry, we'll get you in next, bud. City soon. I might as well go ahead and do some fishing. Mm -hmm. Our fishing is willpower plus one. So who do I want willpower? I mean. Like, is, does, does it just go up and up? Oh, should be the fisher? The archer? You think so? Oh, you're just saying. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's true. Maybe a swordsman? Will and crit for angler. Okay, so I guess crit is good on Come. archer. Get the damn yeah, we'll, we'll fish. We'll, we'll make car archer. And I mean, that does also make sense, because, you know, I don't know. Um, let's go to here first. And we're going to need... Who is going to be our... Tinker? Probably Agamir. Let's make Agamir or Tinker. Go ahead and get which one first, which one first. Um I'll be run. Let's get run first. Then we'll get career plans and kind of move from there. That's 
We restart. We did. We restarted on the hardest difficulty. I have decided that I absolutely love this game, and I figured if we're going to have a nice long playthrough, we should probably start on a difficulty that'll be more proper for a very long playthrough. Uh, this playthrough will be incredibly painful, and uh, it will only be a matter of time until I regret my decision. People say all their lines. Since this is going to be our main playthrough, you YouTube. Hey, YouTube. All right. We take this one. And this one. That's it for now. All right. I don't think I can afford anyone yet, can I? This is a brute. So we currently have Nuri, who is a brute. And Nuri, we're going to turn into a destroyer. It's going to be our heavy armor tank. Now, as a group, they can also get a hammer. So I could get this guy to a hammer. He has zero traits. Right, let's see what our other options are. And it says next to another person in combat. You are good that means, like, docking. literally they're two command. squares bumping up next to each other. I feel, I feel like that's pretty easy to manage. Is, is solitary okay? Yeah, it's okay. Like, we can work with that. It's not going to, like, totally screw me. Solitary is kind of bad for a spearman. Is it? I'm going to... I'm going to... Okay, Jeff says you don't want that on a spearman. <laughs> then the next line in chat is, it's great for a spearman. Look at spearman's other skills. Each time an adjacent ally is attacked by an enemy in close combat, you'll four damage. While next to an ally, this unit has brutality. Solid contact, dispatching ground crew. Enjoy your stay, Commander. Okay. So, the only thing that I'm seeing here is these two. And it looks like we could spec it so it doesn't matter. It looks like we could spec it so that he just he doesn't have, you know, like we could give we could give him sweet spot, range attack applies destabilization, and then harpooner. Is that a, is that a wait. Piercing throw is That'd be a range attack. How do you know if it's considered a range attack? Is that, is that a range attack? It's called a throw, but it doesn't say anything about range.
It is range. It's a long line. Okay. So it sounds like we could get this guy and have him be a harpooner with sweet spot. And not have to worry about solitary. Okay. Your attack range is two to three spaces anyway. Okay, we're do you know what, chat? We're doing it. That just happened. All right, our wages are 86. We gotta we gotta worry a little bit about this. Rich, you're in level. Dang, dude. Um, I think we're gonna make you the sword master again. Barry. Welcome to the team, Barry. All right. Okay. Wish you had a different skill, but maybe we can somehow roll that later. Um, I don't really have anything to sell. We have to kind of, like... We gotta do this with the We have, what, three days the before rest? Complete. You may exit the explosion zone. We, we gotta do this mission. I have, I have no resources to do anything else. Let's go. We're already... We're starting with a bang, chat. We're starting with a bang. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go back to town. I'm out. I'm out. Stop. Go back. Uh, first, let's spend our point on run. We already did. Uh, career plans now. Okay, so we need to do here first. Click on this. We learned Alchemist. Okay. Then we have to go to Town Hall. Is there anything to do here? I don't think there's anything to do here. Talk to her. Are you mercenaries? I'll have you know that we do not take kindly to refugees in these parts. Why? You ask? Because they have over on our streets hey, and taking to the roads. Edoran is sending our way anything with legs and a mouth that cannot be a sword. You have your work cut out for you. There is no lack of honest folk in need of help to fend off Friendship the refugee menace. Let's get up. <laughs> we don't do that here, big guy. Sir Cat, I can pet it. could be our no i don't i want her to be like that yeah we'll wait for we'll go on that but uh red eye you can be our blacksmith that's straight which is what you are all of he is about it about it nuri or barry i think will be our thief or something else we can just keep him as a can i do no professions Private Blade, it's actually been the same person. <laughs> yeah, if you've noticed, it's kind of been in a line. Yeah, happens every so often. It's been three days of stilly wood surrender. 
Bertram knows he's done for, yet he continues defending his lair with such doggedness that we have no choice but to starve. That's why I need mercenaries. He doesn't know you. He might even let you in if he thinks he can convince you to help him. Once you gain his trust, hey, Basic, hey, Ben. Make it worth your while, I promise. Woodcutter, here we go. Nuri. Oh, woodcutter strength? Oh, that's not what I want. No. No. Um, what, what, what else is woodcutter? I want minor on her. Oh, I do. I want minor. Lucas Con 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To wait on the loop cutting. This is golden key here. Nothing is beneath it. Virtue stole two cows and a car from my brother. In one night, his father lost everything. Wow, what a jerk. I will never help the refugees after what happened. Kinbar! Thanks, Kinbar. I beat Wall World? I guess. Oh, Spear is straight. Oh. Barry just became a woodcutter. That's great, because Barry definitely knows his way around Wall He also hates trees, so I mean, that's like Assisted a good thing. docking initiated. Uh, all right. Is there iron in here or anything? Oh, we need to make a lock pick. We don't really have a pick. To think that four years ago, Bertram and I spent our days driving oxen. Seems like a lifetime. Uh, Rathan, I've heard the mine, which we're going to go to very soon. Um, it I've takes a while to respond. Like, somebody said 12 days. But we have no other choice. The citizens of Don't forget to save. Uh, I'm, I'm unlimited, so it saves on its own, I think. I don't, is it, can, we, can we save it ourselves? I don't know if we can even save the game. Oh, we have one manual save. Okay. Oh, JS Colt says, love this game. This game is Stalking completed. Deploying ground crew. Alright, this is this is gonna be a thing, man. I don't really have any I don't really have any good anything right now. want him to engage my rogue, but all right. Yeah, we'll have to check the tooltip on the spear thing. I didn't actually know to push them back. Ow. They're critting a lot. It's a disturbing amount. <laughs>
boss is passively giving them a bunch of crit as well. Mm. Not anymore. Hey, Red, I got glorious. Awesome. Great one. damage to the target and knocks them back one meter. Damage is doubled. What far is it? Is, is each character one meter? Last time it's ever gonna happen. Stakes were made, but that's okay. Hey, golden key. Yo, I missed that last time. What? Awesome. So, Petrum is dead. How do you guys not tell me about that? The man and the good citizens of Tiltran will be glad to hear it. I must commend you for your courage. You did? Oh, okay, that's fair. And now, more importantly, we can pay for our stuff, which is excellent. Can I rest in here? I can't rest again. Can uh, I need to make a lock. I don't. I don't have a lock. We'll wait on that. Oh my God! Awesome. What is this? Medium armor. Any, can you wear medium armor yet? Can you wear anything? You can't wear anything. Nobody can wear anything. Okay, good talk. Alright, uh, you go here. Can't make anything new. Just in cave to lockpick. I don't have a thief yet. I don't have a thief yet. Look at this. I feel like the earlier we get those, the better. They probably mean, mean, mean a lot more in the early game. The 
refugee leader has caught one of your actions and wishes to meet you at Haven. I just have to remember that dang mine was. We should go there immediately. Nice. Go. Get the damn fish. Okay, so I definitely said that we might do Horizon tonight, but now that we've restarted, we're definitely going to play War Tales. Docking successful. Engines disengaged. should have repaired our armor. Uh oh. How bad is it? I have made a mistake. Canary has zero armor. Um, okay, how many big, how many dudes can you recruit? Apparently a lot. have to really focus fire some of these guys down. Only oh, did seven? I thought that was like a range attack. We might have done a lot more. Damage is doubled, used from a distance. Uh, this might this might be bad. I probably need to repair my armor all the way to max at the beginning on all my guys. Oh, 
but I can I can use someone else to then engage him. Let's see. Put him there. <laughs> Seventeen percent chance to, to kill Nuri. I feel, I feel like that, of course, is gonna be. Okay, there we go. <laughs> if we do that, it will kill Nuri. Like that. That's how. That, it's a hundred percent chance to kill Nuri. Seventy percent chance that it's a hundred percent. Sounds great, Red. Thank you. Thank you. Chicken for us. Oh, Farmer Lex is raising the dead. So let's do it. Oh. By playing Horizon Burning Shore tomorrow morning. Yep. Some of you might die, but it's a sacrifice that Co is willing to make. That's right. 100%. It is. Does he get his own protection buff? That's really good. Um. Get rat. might have just made a huge mistake. Because if he now attacks Nuri and kills him. Wait. Wait. What happens if I win the fight? tip and he says wow thanks we really appreciate it but well said That would have been a 
phaser. Shield connoisseur. So are are traits just like totally random? Is that how that works? If you right click an ability, it will show you who's in range while moving. Oh, oh mm, let me look at that again. Hold on. Glorious. Ow. Dang, dude. the clonks, Nuri. Give him the clonks. This guy without hitting someone else? I don't think so. Boom of this one. As someone who likes XCOM, would you recommend this game? Yeah, probably. Yep. Ow. Wow. Mr. Agner is not messing around, I see. Oh. Oh, I thought when they were demoralized, I didn't even look at the turn order. I thought we got to go a full turn before they did. When demoralized. That's unfortunate. I really misread that. When we sleep, do people um, heal? Yeah. No. Okay. Destroyer. The willpower. for the medium armor. Beautiful. Nice little upgrade there. Okay. Excellent. Now wait, can she use this? What is the Annihilation skill? This attack ignores guard. Oh, that's kind of cool. Interesting. I need a better shield for her. Huh. All right. Oh. Ship's log. Landing gear retracted. We are in the landing pad. Observe queuing system when exiting the station. Choice, but to rob travelers. 
I love so much that the game doesn't even give you an option to release them unless you have the right, like, items. Like, you can't just let them go. Like, nope, you gotta die, I guess. Okay. Sorry. Damn. You gotta get back and get another thing stat here. Four, three, two, one, engage. Gonna beat this game? I have no idea. Am I having a great time playing it right now? Yes. How do we get like a motorcycle in this game? Or maybe a party boat? I'm sure those are real things that exist, right? Maybe faster on the road. Seven required. Oh damn. Hmm. Yeah. Good shit all for now. Baby face with the ten bomb. Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Thank you, baby face. This is an interesting one. So, dude just joined the channel. First thing he said is, I listened to rap my whole life. I sat, second thing, I sat with her Barb's friend, Dion. Third, didn't everyone at work see me? And Victor. Fourth, and the cleaner before I went a little nuts last year. And the phone booth guy, Matt, who used to be my dairy co-worker. Fake news is bad, good news is good, too liberal, I have no white friends. Are you a, are you a bot? I, th I think you're a bot. Because people don't believe in trials. Okay, I, are, hmm. <laughs> Account created June 3rd, 2016. Huh. <laughs> that's a... That's a new one. That's what that is. I think he's just saying words. Yeah, I think words are just being said. I don't even think they're words that make sense together, really. It's an experiment for school. Yeah, chat GPT just trying to fit in. True. Chat GPT just trying to fit in. He's just trying to fit in. He enjoys doing human things. That's right. Funky Burrow. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, let's do. We make some stuff. Oh, there's no forge here. Let's do. Wait. 
wood there, that there. Apparently this is going to be like our home base for this bit. Oh, we can sell these spices. Game is super cozy. This game is super I don't sell crock swine meat. It tastes like swamp water. To be fair, swamp water is delicious. I mean, I don't know if you've tried it. Pretty good. Alright, let's rest. I love some good swamp water. My grandfather was a soldier in the Edoranian Legion. He fell in love with my grandmother. with the new sub mullet 197 thank you bud appreciate you duder here we go how's the game change up after the first region does the story pick up uh the game maintains this kind of sandbox atmosphere up until at least ryan the fourth region so it, it's it's kind of all about Progressing your character band, your characters in more bands, in terms of levels and research, and, and kind of building out your war camp and things like that. So it that's kind of the what I've seen the main progression in the game. Docking 
numbers. Nope. Hey! Dream Killer unlocked Shield Connoisseur. Nice, dude. Hell yeah. It's great. A raw 5% right there. I thought Co played Battle Brothers a year or so ago. No, no, I, I never played Battle Brothers actually. That's one of those games that's kind of on my rainy day list that I know I'm gonna like playing, so I'll play it one day most likely, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not yet. You have been misled. Thanks for the sub, I appreciate it. Also, Eternal Rift. Thank you for the sub as well. Yeah, I um, definitely, definitely am due to play Battle Brothers at some point. Oh, Lord. <laughs> OCD TV, no offense, but it's never, it's never not going to be weird. Good reading show. stuff like that for me. Low tech with a five bomb. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you, dude. Thanks. Boop. Uh, let's do this actually. Can we, can we get together? Dunk. I'm sad I could never see a reaction to the ashtray maze and control. Darn DMCA. Well, to be honest, I thought it was okay. 
Like, I, I wasn't, um... Yeah, it was alright, you know, it was okay. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think I didn't like the music that much or something. The, the effect was cool and everything, but... Yeah, I, I don't think I like the music. Am I trying to, am I thinking the right music? Maybe. Suzu says you didn't like it in the Co. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Sorry. I feel like I need to apologize for that. <laughs> Sorry. Bears are literally killing it out there on the field of battle. Yes, they literally are killing people and probably eating parts of them too. Thank you. Why do you not stream when Carnage is streaming? Is there an agreement between you and your twin? Uh, yeah. I threatened to expose him. And he knows what I mean. So, you know, because of that, he decided to kill him. expose him anyway. One day I just might. One day I just might. Damn it. And... I was, yeah, hold on, we're right here still. I definitely need to not only, re oh, you don't have a smith. That's right, you jerk. Where's it close to smith? It doesn't say what they have. We also gotta go to this jail. Uh, maybe, do they have a, do they have a smith? Let's check them. Maybe. What are these guys? Can I talk to them? What are what are you? Who are you? Incoming message. Ah, oh, mercenaries. Looking for a plague remedy, are we? Don't bother asking anyone else. We're the only ones who sell it around here. Hmm. Smuggler key. Interesting. Okay.
We do need to get 20 mosquito proboscises. We'll be looking into that soon. I guess we have to go after them. Here we go. Here we go. Friendly advice. Maintain your armor properly. The car got Maintain low tones. Did really just get level eight? Level seven. Oh, I guess level seven. At level eight, the unit and all allies in the area gain brutality. It's a battle cry ability for one. Draws within melee range all the enemies in the area and applies fragility. For as long as this unit has less than 50% health, they always deal critical hits. What? Swamp isn't always easy, but it's our clan's way. The elders say what doesn't kill you makes you strong. And all the elders are dead. Okay, let's go to the spirit. Oh. Massive amount of proboscis this round. See what I did there? Proboscis. Incoming mission critical yeah. message. Proboscises? Doesn't sound. Proboscis. Is this game massive or is Code just doing every little bit available? Uh, I mean, I'm. I am fully clearing every region, so I am I am doing every bit there is to do. There, there is that, yes. I think I might actually put this here. Tried Age of Wonders 4 yet? No, not yet. I swear to God, if one more person asks me about Age of Wonders 4, I'm going to have to try it. Thankfully, no one is going to ask me about it again after this point, so we're fine. I know it says if you tried Age of Wonders 4. <laughs> um. I, I guess I'm gonna have to give it a try. I, I guess. Um, we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, we'll have to see. Maybe we'll try the cozy stream. I don't know. I, I, enough, enough people have told me it's really good at this point that I think I need to at least give it a try. So maybe we'll try it tomorrow night. Yeah, maybe we'll try it tomorrow night. We'll see. We'll see. Um. Jabba D's huts. First time in chat. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, that's fair. I appreciate. It. I did ask a question. You gave an answer. Thank you. Yeah. We'll 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 give it a try tomorrow night. We'll see how it is. I'll finally I'll finally be able to answer the question precisely on what I think of Age of Wonders. So let it be known. I'll try it tomorrow, tomorrow evening on on this channel. I wasn't going to, but I think enough people have finally asked me. That's worth at least giving a try. 
One way. I love this emote. Dude, it's so good. It's so good. Julia has so many other good emotes that I cannot wait to put on this channel. Yeah, we've, we've, uh, we've got like a power-up emote that I think is phenomenal. That was going to be a lot of fun. And even more. Even more. I was working on a clown emote today. Oh, that's perfect because I am indeed nothing but a clown. I like it. Yeah, Julia, by the way, Barry Barry made the point to mention that with my current the current amount of subs on this channel, if I were to roll over to partner right now, I would go from 9 emotes to 37. <laughs> so, we got to uh not that I'm going to get partner anytime soon, but we might want to get ready. <laughs> That's going to be um a little bit of a jump. Yeah. A little bit of a jump. <sighs> Did you see that Zeke was playing Lost Odyssey the other day and a story made him well up and get teary? I want to see you play it as soon as you have before. Really? That's, that's wild. I, I tried to play that game way back in the day, and it just did not grab me. I think it was like, there's like a ring system or something in it. Do mm. yeah. you think already being a partner will help speed up the process for partners? Being Getting a partner? Um, I, I, I would... I think the metrics that you guys give me speed me up to getting a partner, but that's about it. So to get to get actual full partner, the only thing left I have to do, is here, which makes it super easy these days because they, there's like a whole achievement page that never existed when I was a kid on Twitch, Twitch kid. Um, I have streamed 22.85 hours, and I need to stream 25. Tonight I have streamed. Two hours and four minutes. What? It, how much is point one five of an hour? Not fifteen minutes. It's like how, how does that work out? <laughs> Nine minutes. Okay. So. Apparently, I have to stream for five more minutes, and then I'll be eligible for partner. <laughs> but then again, when the, the way partner works is you have to apply for it and stuff. So we'll have to um, apply for partner and then wait for that to go through, and then a bunch of other stuff happens, and you know it's it's, it's a whole process. So it could be it could be weeks. So, I mean, as far as I know, it could be weeks. Could be weeks. We'll see. We'll all see together. Uh, let's just go ahead and lock this guy down and be safe. Can you even have partner with multiple channels? Oh yeah. Uh, believe it or not, lots of streamers have had partner with multiple channels. Yep. Blood Reserve. What's that do? After two applications, this unit completely regenerates their health. Well, that's no, that's fair. That's that's totally fine and fair, completely. Yeah. Oh, 
TPVP says, I hope you get partnership quick. You're a great streamer new to this platform. It's like you already have a decade of streaming experience already. Oh, thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Uh, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I, I appreciate you. I do. I appreciate you. Oh, okay. Brianir, thanks for the sub. Moonmancer, thank you for your sub as well. Wolf's Bane as well with the brand new sub. Shadows Earth, Hidden Squid, Marv SR, Straz, Mr. Mothball. Thank you all for the subs. I appreciate Only two mosquito. I need 20 of these things. Dang, dude. Come on, man. All right. Anyway, what I got to do is I got to go. Thank you all so much for being here this evening. I appreciate it. I will see you fine folks tomorrow morning at ADMET. We're going to be checking out a game called Bramble. Uh, quick note, by the way, a little bit of a full disclosure thing here. Um, I thought I was going to be playing Darkest Dungeon 2 at 9 a.m. on Monday. It may be more like 12 p.m. Maybe. So we may have to figure out something to do on the 8th. But you know what? We got lots of things we can do. We'll figure it out. But uh, regardless, thank you all so much for being here. I will see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. ET for Bramble. I will see you at 1 p.m. ET for Drop Frames. I will see you around 6 to 6.30 for our first look, apparently, at Age of Wonders 4. And uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Today's video is sponsored by a product I use and own, Starforge Systems. If you're looking for an accessible, cutting edge PC, we have a computer for you at every price point. We offer several PCs, including PCs built for content creators or people looking to have a top of the line gaming setup. So you can get the PCs that's right for you. Every PC comes with a two year parts and warranty, hand built right here in Austin, Texas. Personally, I love my Starforge PC. It's the best computer I've ever had. You can click the link in the description to check out Starforge PCs today. All right, let's call her up. Let's do this. Hello? Hey, you ready to take your quiz? Yeah, I'm so excited. Yes, you are. Let me bring up yeah, the info. Like, what's the point of a quiz? Uh, the point of the quiz is to tell people about things they may have not known um, and to get a general understanding of where the guild is at as a whole. Because I think there's a lot of elitists and I think people that are really good at this game do not have the capability to put themselves in the shoes and know what it's like to be new. And they're playing with people that are new. So we shouldn't like Google. No, I don't want you to Google. I don't want anyone to cheat. No well, cheating. you say that, right? But it's like, you did tests in, in school and you cheated and like, How's that gonna help you in life? So I should cheat. I mean, this is a 
fucking raiding guild. Um, and in school, getting good grades can help you get into a college. You can cheat the system and it actually benefits you. This will not benefit you. It, this does benefit me because then I go, I don't get like, you know, megalos by the chat, you know, like my ego's kind of high. Like, I'm like, oh. I truly think, I, I, I think you're going to do a pretty good job on this quiz. There's no hard questions. Well, there's some that I, I would have missed two of these. When I was making the quiz, obviously chat told me the answer while I was making it. I would have probably missed two of these. And I'll tell you what they are when I get there. Yeah, but it, it's kind of scary because now I have like an audience listening to me take a class. And I'm scared. You're okay. Close chat. All right. Uh, let me bring up the questions for you. Do you want to see? I assume you want to see the questions yourself, right? No. No? You just want me to read it to you? Yeah, I'm, I'm not like dead or anything. Okay. All right. Okay. Hang on. All right. What are world buffs and where can you get them? They're buffs. Get them by the boss. I was scared. Okay, but do I answer it? Like, it's a world buff. It, there's, I, I mean, there's. It. Okay, what does it do? And. Give me and a you, give me a description of how a world buff's gonna help you as a low level. Do you want me to tell you what the world buff does? Which one? Sure. Just however you want, but all of them if you want. I don't know all of them. I know like ZG and I know Nexus. Yeah. Okay, so I get move speed from one, and I think a percentage this And then I think the next gives me attack power, which is stupid and critical spell chance. Maybe. Okay, where do you get them? Booty Bay and Storm. Next question. What is LOS? Line of sight. Name a way you can interrupt a heal as your current class. Oh. Name something that your class can use that does not have a GCD. Conjure water. <laughs> does that work? <laughs> is that your answer? I mean, yeah, it doesn't have a GCD, does it? No. Yeah, sure. That's the answer. It's going to like an ability or anything. The purpose of this question is, one, I'm basically asking, do you know what a GCD is? Yeah, I fucking play Final Fantasy XIV yeah. now. Okay. All right, well, Conjure Water, that's your answer. Okay. <laughs> Was it wrong? <laughs> not, I'm not, no, I will we'll tell you at the end. What okay. is the cooldown of potions? Don't I test mean, it. Do not test Whoa. it. Whoa. Okay, I want to say 60 seconds. I haven't potted yet. I don't know. 30? Pick one. I have to write one answer. <laughs> Can I test it? Everybody else tested it, bat. They honestly probably did, but okay, I well, want you to not test it. I mean, I can't because I'm, I'm flying. I want to say, I want to say 30 seconds. I feel like I'm gonna spend all All right. No, a minute, because I remember, didn't I put in like wrath, like mana? Yeah, look, okay, use the seconds. Okay. 60 oh, seconds. No. All right. What can you do to prevent dying to fall damage? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. Myself. Well, yeah, that's correct. But the question before, I, I skipped one. What is CC? Crowd control. Like, you know, like, like, example or? No, it's uh, good enough. Um, what can you do to prevent dying to fall damage? Slowful or like not running off cliff. Uh, what is mostly accepted as the best AOE class? Mage. Can you lower the chance of being dazed? Or sorry, what can you do? Look, turn my back. To lower the chance of being dazed while running away from mobs that are hitting you. Don't turn your back. So we did number 10. What can you do to lower the chance of being dazed? What is threat? Acro. Give me a description. Okay, so I'm in a party. Can I give you this like a, like a priest thing? Like I wouldn't mind blast because I don't want to pull threat from the tank. I know that you know what threat is, but you I gotta- I describe it better. So every attack that I do generates threat. I don't want to pull threat, threat decides. From the tank. Threat decides who the tank is attacking. Yeah. Or who the boss is tanking. Or, uh, what is strafing? You already kind of answered that with the other question, but no. describe it to me. Name three usable elixirs that you can use right now. You don't have to give me the names, but describe what they do. Either works. I mean, I don't know how much they give, but I know it's like agility elixirs. There's like okay. uh, the intelligence one, the spirit one. <laughs> they just increase stats. Spirit elixir? Isn't there? You literally said you could give me some. I, I'm at, I'm, you have to put three answers. You have agility elixir, int elixir, and spirit elixir. Assisted docking yeah. initiated. Okay. I'm not sure about the spirit one because you've never given me one. I assume it exists. Okay. Uh, name four enchants in the game. Okay. Can I like look at my weapon? <laughs> yeah. Wait, do I need to know the name of it or just what it does? Either. 
Okay, so I know there's fiery because I had that. I know there's ice because it's cool. Um, and then the spell power, the one that I have in my mage right now. Okay. Some more. Oh, there's so many more in the game, but no, you only need. No, I'm saying like, do you, well, how many? Oh no, you need. No, you need to name four. four? You're right. Yeah, four. Okay. Uh, right. Minor speed on my boots. Okay. How much does a level forty mount cost? Multiple answers accepted. Forty gold. Is that level? What level? No. Level 40? forty mount. I want to say forty gold because I remember like having to grind money for that. Something like that. Okay. I don't know if it's what. Yeah. Okay. All right. Why should you down rank spells? Less mana cost. Faster animation. Faster speed. What potion gives you a bonus to movement speed? Potion of speed. <laughs> potion of speed. Right. Okay. What is considered your class's main stat? Ooh, I want to say intellect, even though you told me my intellect doesn't matter. I didn't say it didn't matter. I just said it, it's not. Well, you it's, said it's it. Not, you it said doesn't. It doesn't. Does, like min max and roll gnome because gnome is ugly. And I said five percent. Yeah, like, like, no going crazy. going gnome as a mage is not comparable to going human as a warrior for sword skill. They're not comparable. But it is, that is my main stat, though, right? Like, we'll go over at the end. Because uh, if what? it's not, then you just taught me wrong, and I should have min max. All right. Uh, what weapons can your class use, and what should your class use? Staves, a wand, and I know I can use a dagger, but I should use a stave. Stab. Okay. And a wand. <clears throat> what? Da, da, da. Name three professions. Herbalism, engineering, alchemy. What profession allows the use of a target dummy? Engineering. Yep, I know that one. Uh, what is, you know what target dummies do. What does a target dummy do? Take crap. Oh, yeah, I know you know this one. Uh, explain the five second rule when it comes to mana in combat. If I'm not attacking, I get mana back after seconds. I'm not casting. Uh, what is Light of a Loon? I don't know. Wait, isn't Light of a Loon the thing that makes you invulnerable for 10 seconds and contained with arson? And you're like, you were making much clips of people being stupid as f and misdemeanor? I want to say it's that, but I'm not positive if that is that. Okay. I mean, it's a better answer than I don't know. Okay. So, all right. What causes a mob to extend their leash after you have pulled them? Hitting them. Just doing damage. What is first aid? Profession. Technically, yes. What, is, what does it do? How does it help you? It lets me bandage myself mid combat. Okay, that's right. Why is it scary <laughs> when a mob flees? Because it can pull other packs of mobs. You have a quest that requires you to enter a cave. What do you do? Stay the f*** away. Okay, but I mean, if I is it an easy cave or like a cave that I'm gonna fucking die in? I I mean. Okay, okay, stay the. Well, way, what what would you what would you honestly do? I would. I, I I'll give you a hint. Depending on who's answering this question, or yeah, who's answering this question will determine what their answer should be. I mean, yeah, it's a little different because like I go in caves. I mean, I full clear the cave because if I don't, then I'm gonna eventually pull up. But I would stay away from some caves. So. 50 50 either not do the quest or if i'm gonna do it then full clear and everything because if i pull then it's gg and i have nowhere to run back to what channel slash channels do you use to form a group for a dungeon lfg all right what is kiting you know what? I'll, even, I'll even do the uber channel uber yeah slash yeah. uber you're right all right uh what channel slash channels do you uh no what is kiting hitting a mob so you're hitting them and not getting hit so you have aggro on the mob, and you are effectively leashing out the party if you need to. Someone asked to mock you for content. Your view count is lower than usual. What do you do? What level am I? <laughs> hey, what level are you on your mage? 31. Ship release. Okay, what do you do? Which streamer? <laughs> okay. Miss Kim. I'll do it. <laughs> okay. What causes fatigue in WoW, and what does it do? Uh, I want to say it's out when you're in the ocean and you're swimming. And Watch where you're flying, to, uh, Commander. You up, and if you reach zero, you start drowning, I think. Or losing health. I don't know if you instantly die, but I remember having to do this one to Thranasis. And having those, like, parts of the ocean. Not swimmable, too. Good enough. Um, okay, how long does your breath last underwater? This is one of the ones I don't think I'd get. Okay. So, I remember you asked me this as like an example question, I remember I thought about and it. I, and I, I, I refuse to give you the right answer. I know, you did not give me the right answer, but I thought about it, and I remember opening that box in Dark Shore on one of the bo uh, boats. And it takes like five seconds to open the box, and I was like, hmm, how many five seconds are in this bar? I want to say 45 seconds or a minute. 
A minute. Pick, to be pick safe. one. One minute. minute. One minute. Okay. Name three actually useful add-ons that help you survive while leveling. Can I take a look at my add-on list? So of course. I can give you the ones. All sure. right. I want to say rat fights. Okay. Classic beastie, I think. And survive or just exist in the world? I think survive. Things that, uh, like, let's say you're completely okay with the standard basic UI and everything. Okay. You're almost done. Uh, what does the add on details, recount, and scatter do? Shows you how much damage you do per second to pass. Shows you what people are doing and right too. It's not like just spells. What are dots? An ability that applies the dot over time effect. Dot over <laughs> damage over time effect. Yes, <laughs> it's dot. Okay, you are in a dungeon. You are a hunter or warlock. Your group has jumped down to skip a large chunk of the dungeon. I do what some of my path. What is spell pushback? It's when you're getting hit and you're casting a spell and it makes it take a lot longer to go off. Okay. Fall damage is not percent based. True or false? False. Actually, yeah, true or not true. Like, you, you don't, I don't think you take a percentage. Actually, no. You do take a percentage because you die from the same cliff I die from. You screamed at me, I would have killed you. So, true or false? Fall damage is not percent based. True or false? False. It is percent based. Lava damage is not percent based. True or false? Honestly, true, because nobody really incidents from that. Describe the difference between needing something and greeting something. Okay, so if I'm a hunter and I have a war in my dungeon, I could need on those weapons because they're better as a stat stick for me, but I shouldn't do that, but I do it anyways. <laughs> okay, you gotta. T you so, gotta okay, the difference is am I a nice person or am I a dickhead that cares about stats? How is this? I don't know. Okay, like, okay, if I if I need the item for my class, I need it. If I can use the item, but I don't need it because someone else in my party needs it for their class, because it's their class, I'd greet it. Okay. And everyone can greet it for money. All right, it's not this and then. Describe what layering is and how it can get you killed. So a layer, there's, okay, there's a couple of layers in the wall. Because if everybody was in the same fucking layer, there wouldn't be enough mobs for anyone. And it randomly puts you on a random fucking layer. And you can layer off that layer by joining someone else's party. And remember, remember that, I, I I have to fucking write this down. So yeah, it's your you're, fucking quiz. You're, and you're, give, you're you giving asking? me a okay. you're giving me a bibliography. Can you fucking summarize it for me? You ask these fucking questions. How many? Okay, a layer is uh, like the short uh, version. I don't know, it's an instance of WoW that is is different from someone else's, and if you layer to a different layer, the mobs could respawn and you could die. Because on your own layer, they were dead, on a different layer, they're not dead. That, I don't know how else to shorten that, man. Okay, you clearly know what it is. All right, write me a macro that targets someone in the guild. Slash target. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, write me a macro that allows you to eat food and drink water in one button. Oh, slash eat and then you control click i don't know you could even do that but i'm gonna okay if i, if I were to write a macro i'd be like slash eat and then I'd click on a food in my bag i do an enter and i okay, do so, slash drink so slash eat link food slash drink link the food or link the water yeah i don't know you could do that at the same time what do you what do you like or name one thing you like about your class and one thing you dislike about your class I like being a god. Okay, god class. Okay, I don't like having mana. I think it's stupid that I can drink every four pools. I feel like <laughs> mage should have unlimited mana. I'm already a god. I might as well be a god god. Okay, so god class, don't like having mana. Yeah, I don't like having like mortal, and, you know, mana All right. usage. All right, I'm going to be grading these, but I'll grade yours first since you're here. You ready? Yeah. All are, right. Are you giving me like a... Well, how are you grading me? Like S type of shit? Or like A, B? Like that? Or are you giving me like a, a, a B, score? There's A plus, A minus, etc. Oh, God. I, I'll probably have to grade it again, and I'll give you the actual score, I'm sure. Okay, All right, what are you like, oh, hold on. Are you grading me with like bias because we're like dating, or are you like being an asshole? I'm going to be an asshole. <laughs> okay. What are world buffs? You know that. What is LOS? No, tell me what I didn't know. No, grade me first, and then tell me what I okay. found. Can you like a, can you like a drum? So it's like exciting for me. Okay, hold on. I'm grading. Do me a favor. Mm-hmm. Hit conjure water for me. 
Okay. Did everything go on GCD when you hit it? Docking confirmed. Dispatching ground crew. Enjoy your stay, Commander. Oh. Maybe. Conjure water, not drink water. Yeah, you said conjure water. I wrote it down. All right, well, go ahead. Go I ahead and drink. Drink a health pot for me. How long is it on cooldown if you drink that? I can't. I'm not. Oh wait, I can drink a mana pot. Two minutes. Mm. Long. <laughs> yep. Hey, listen. I don't know these questions because like I don't drink potions. Because I don't take damage. Because I'm not good. All right. I've graded. I, I found the ones that you got wrong. So you got a total of. Out of 44 questions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, what? eight. You got eight wrong. How? Wait, like, 32 I mean, is also wrong. What are you talking about? What the? F well, tell me what other ones I got wrong. 32 is also wrong. Hold on. 32 is wrong? What? What's 32? That's the uh, how long is your breath last? What are you talking about? It's one minute. One minute is correct, stream. Three. It depends on if you're undead. Are you guys retail? Like one minute is correct. All right, anyways, so here's the ones oh, you got wrong. Amazing. I don't, you know, I wouldn't have gotten that right. If someone asked me before I made this quiz, I would have guessed like two minutes. I, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the ones you got wrong. Ding. The grats. Conjure water is not a GCD. Um, the cooldown of potions is two minutes. Mounts do not cost 40 gold. They cost, How much do they cost? I would have accepted 80 or 100 or 90. Like anything How much in that do they range. actually cost? Like a hundred, nine or ninety gold. Your first mount. Mm -hmm. Why am I thinking forty gold? Is it just to learn the mount? I don't think either the mount or it's ten percent less if you have the rep, so it's about ninety gold. Hundred gold if you don't have rep. The mount is separated from the cost of training, but I think the mount is the most is expensive training part. Training forty still. gold? No, but training's like ten gold. Okay, forty gold in Wrath of Lich King is how much it cost. That's but that's the only f***ing time I've had him now. Okay, well now you know because we're playing classic. No, then you, okay, but it's bullshit. You gotta accept that answer because it's no. actually, but no. it's viable. It's the only no. f***ing version of WoW you have me play. Okay, there's people that won't know this because they haven't played WoW. Period. All right, this is a class. This is hard. It's, no, it's not no, correct. No. You got it wrong. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you it's wrong. No, then, then you should have specified what version of WoW we're answering this for. Shut up. <laughs> Shut no, up. No, you give me that. You give me that right now. No, I will not. No. Okay, then you know what. I will I will put our dinner okay, in the microwave. It. I'm hiding it. Hiding it. Okay. All right. Uh, Please. So name four or name three elixirs. You said spirit elixir. It does not exist. Okay, that's funny because you literally answered my question today. I was like, oh, what elixirs can I drink? And you're like, maybe there's a, there's a spirit one I can there's give a, you. There, there's a. I was just for the okay, sake so of. You, you to for me, the then. sake of easy conversation, there is a spirit scroll. Okay, then that suck you can... my fing ass. You literally lied to me. I asked you a question, you fing okay, lied to me. But this it wasn't was an, a it quiz. Was an okay, but it... it was an elixir question that I asked you five minutes ago, and you, you lied to me, man. You lied to me, it's like it looks stupid on stream. I mean, I, I like to, you, I like to you're like, you, you literally said, What consumables can I have while we're having fing breakfast? And I'm like, I mean, I can get you, you can get That's spirit so scrolls. I asked you that right when we were waiting for the fing. That is live on stream. I asked you that. I mean, whatever. Like, you copied no, the wrong test then. You, no, no I'm you, not you giving it to you. To me. You, you got it wrong. To me. You got it wrong. You got it wrong. What potion can you use that increases your speed? The movement speed. You said potion of speed. It's a is swift that the one that makes you like... Yeah, it makes you sprint. It's called a swiftness potion, though. I wanted the name. The full Nobody actual. Cool okay, well, when you're buying it yourself and you're looking it up on the auction house, you need to know the name of it. Bullshit, I can play from Kevin Speed and still find that. Let's see. Are you auctionator? I am. Okay, speed. Good. Speed, steel, rapier, and swim speed potion are what come up. Swim speed, that works. That literally works. They increase your move speed in water. Okay, potion of... It's a swim speed, not potion of you, speed. You like, asked what increases my move speed. That, that literally works. No, he's losing... Everyone's yes, losing that point. Yes, it, it does. No, it doesn't. No, You're not going to uh -huh. change this. And then because the, you, you're just so biased against me. All right. Please. I'm works. not. I'm not biased against you. I'm not. It I'm works. not. I'm just not going to be biased with you here. Well, let me read the question. How did I word it? I'm just curious. What potion gives you a bonus to movement speed? Movement yeah. speed is different movement from swim speed. speed. They are. They are absolutely disconnected. Movement. Minor move speed enchant on your boots does not increase swim speed. Uh, your wording is just an ass cheese. Okay. You, you should have worded like what increases your running speed. 
But I'm, I'm still moving in water. Just because I'm sm you know, swimming doesn't mean I'm not moving. I agree. Swimming is a form of movement, but in this context... No, but you didn't give me context. You worded it like an asshole. Please, man. Please, come on. Just one extra mark. Please, man. Okay, hold on. Let's go to I'm the next question. Tonight. All right. Uh, what weapons can your class use and what should your class use? I'm not going to take... I'm actually going to not take away from this, but... Oh, do I not use a staff? You do use a staff. You use staffs, you use wands, you use daggers. What should you use? I think if you have two of the same item level weapons, one hand or an off hand is better. It gives more stats overall. But I mean, I never had a mage, so. I know. Well, what, uh, you this know is what? this is a this is a this is for learning. But I'm not going to take away from that. It's Is it actually two. like end game mage? Sword and dagger? Well, I mean, okay, here's an example. Let's say you have a dagger and an offhand from BWL, and then you're, which is a, a raid, and then you go to AQ40 and you get a higher item level staff. That staff might be better than the one-hander and offhand. But if that staff was the same item level as one-hander and dagger or one-hander and offhand, the one-hander and offhand would be better. That's an example. We were saying ATS, but ATS, again, is like way higher item level. What's ATS? Atiyah is the legendary staff from so I'm Nax. Right. We're never getting that. I'm not taking. I'm not. I'm not taking points away. I agree. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's I'm that's that was that's too stupid. Um, another one you got wrong. The Mot Garot. You do not Mot Garot. Period. Espe you not Mizkif either. You, but you asked for a content. If my if my if my view can is low, I know you want me to do something. So my view no, goes higher. No, I don't. Okay, I, you, my yeah, the you content. The content that I want is to make it to raid. That is if such you bullshit. Gra that is such bias. Mongrowing because... someone from the guild. Yeah, but you gave me much... a streamer. And... I did. Someone dumb as... Someone yeah, and I'm stupid. level 30. That doesn't really matter. I have like 500 level 30s. That, that like, I, don't, I don't care if you win. You just killed someone in the guild. Someone so? in the guild just died for no reason. I don't care. Hey, but it's Miskiff. He can literally pay someone level for him. And well, he probably does. He probably, so, he okay, probably does. Gave, okay, so sure, you, oh, you should have given me a different streamer that I know wouldn't have paid someone else to be level for him. You gave me Miskip, I said, okay, sure, because I know he still gets someone point. else level. You're losing No, a please, point. but, but you, <laughs> gave me the, you gave You're me the wrong streamer then. <laughs> I mean, other people aren't even going to get a streamer. Like, no. And that was supposed to be a meme question, but you managed to fuck. Everyone's going to fuck that up, I guarantee it. Number 43. Make a macro that eats food and drinks water at the same time. Slash eat, and then you link the food. Slash drink and you link the water. I'll be honest. I don't know if that actually works. Um, I, I've not, I didn't even know he could do that. I know I slash like... slash cast would work and slash use would work. Cast eat. Yes, yeah, slash cast and then link the food. Yes, that would work. That's actually how I do it too. Oh, I'm fuck? I'm literally gonna test it and see. I don't think it does. Slash eat. <laughs> Everyone's uh, emo. <laughs> It is a fucking macro. It's it's <laughs> it's an emote. You begin to eat. It's not actually eating the apple. Okay, I don't know. People fucking like macro like eating and drinking because it doesn't like. How come I regen so much health when I can drink water? Uh, because your spirits also, is high and you're low level. It means you're out of combat. That's why. And plus, you didn't fucking, you didn't clarify. I could. That's a roleplay answer, and I think you should accept that. No, I'm not. No, but slash you have use, a furry slash guild. Cast. We're all roleplaying. Okay, so you got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven wrong. Let me. Six, and uh, actually five because you you worded some you know questions stupid. You're not gonna change this shit. Can I? Okay, can I do something for like extra credit? No, you cannot. Okay, I'll remember that time. Fuck, it's gonna be so hard. I I feel for teachers right now. Where am I? He got twelve and fourteen wrong. Because you lied to me about the spirit elixir. I can go back oh, in the van. Oh wait. No, the... you know I'm. I'm I know why I'm confused. The you're, I, I'm not. I'm not. Fine. Go to the but, bot. But you, because you lied to me. It's right there in the chat. I asked you. I'm like, well, what consumables can I use as an elixir? I didn't even know that was a question. And you lied to me. You you, you taught me wrong. I thought it was about like learning and teaching, and you, you fucking lied to me. So yeah, I gave a wrong answer because you taught me wrong. Well, good news is you me. got you got two thirds of the question right, not the entire question. Right. All right, grade. You got an A. You got 88.33 percent of the questions. You got an A. Did you, did you like mark up the questions that I, you know, you should have like... Yeah. Marked it up? Yeah. Like the I the misgive one too? Mm-hmm. That's a B. A final grade says it's an A. B plus. Basically, you're a B plus slash A. I think you did a good job, baby. I, I, listen, you got a couple wrong. It's okay. 
I'm very proud of you. I was not very happy, I'll be honest. I feel like you, you kind of led me astray on this test and... I didn't lead you astray. You kind of did. You were supposed to be like the person that can like copy answers from when you fucking lied to me. You gave me the wrong answers to sabotage me because you wanted to look better than me in the test. Joking success. I haven't even taken I haven't even... I can't even take it. You, you said you got two answers wrong. Yeah, when I was taking it, I was thinking like, wow, if I took this test, I would have probably gotten that wrong. But like, now I know the answers. Like, I made the test. Of course I know the answers now. I've graded it. I can't take it. You're, you're like that fucking kid that looks really smart, and then you notice that I'm copying off your paper, so you start writing the wrong fucking shit down, and you erase it when I'm done looking. You are so upset that you got some wrong. Be because the only reason I got them wrong is because you, you led me straight to get them wrong. Like, the misgift question, is... I even asked for context. Asked for context. I you don't want- I don't- I don't want you to fucking mock Garam Izkip. I don't care who it is in the guild. There's no right answer. There's no one in the guild I want you to mock Garam. Not a single person. I don't care what their view count is, where they are in the game. It is short-term thinking, and that is not thinking as a group. You do not mock Garam Iz. You do not mock Garam anyone. Ever. Well, that's actually wrong, because I have characters I can fall back on. They don't! Yeah, but if I died... Uh... Okay, but I die on and purpose. Well, now on you're content. dying. You're dying on a character yeah, that we funneled. We have funneled gear into you. You funnel gear on all my characters. No, all not characters. at 60. It's different. When you when we kill a boss in MC, you, in no context do you ever do it. And then you kill them. They're out of the guild now. Okay, like, fine. Different argument. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so. I come from MMOs, right? Where, like, dating the guild leader gives oh, me no. DKP automatically. So, no, it doesn't! Yes, no, it does. No, it so doesn't. being the girl, and I'm not like the other no. girl, I'm playing mage. So no! I like to argue my point here and get five extra DKP purely because we're dating, and if you don't want that, fine, we don't have to date. What the fuck? That is not how this works. It's not? No! That is not how this works. I will not bend the knee to this. Funny, because you gave someone plus two DKP for posting a furry picture. How much DKP I get for carrying you through life? How much DKP do I get for getting you to stream? What about waking I, you up? I gave you back, giving stay, you food. Stay safe got it because he fucking actually, like, really embraced his fursona. You can do the same thing, but it's, you didn't I take the initiative. I barked to you! You called me out of barking to you, IRL! Wait, what? I bark sometimes. You, you, you pointed this out and made fun of me on stream. I mean, we were, listen. When we were taking the test just now, all right, and you were making a macro that targets someone in the guild, you said woof, woof, woof. If you barked and you did it like a real furry, I would have given you DKP, but you did okay, not. Okay, you don't know how to pronounce my name. It's literally just woof, woof, woof. It's not actual, like, bark. You, you know what's crazy? If I was a guy, no, if I was, if I was bigger, you'd give me DKP. No, I would not. Yes, you would no, I would this, probably. This is what it comes down to. I, I would take. I would are, take it away from him because it's funny. What? Are you gay? I'm asking you right now. Tell me, are you no. gay? Because you give me DKP if I was your boyfriend. How did this even happen? You, what is if going I was bigger, on? You'd pass me in lead, and you'd be like, "Oh, please let me give you DKP. I love you so much." That is. That is. Yes, it fucking. What is you are getting... so wrong. I, you know what? I'm about to take away proof, DKP for this. I have proof because we raided last time around. You literally did this. He you was the. Me. He was the raid lead. He's not anymore. If he joins, it doesn't matter. You had so much. Please. He was the raid leader. Now I am. There's. It's different. Exactly. What? Give me DKP. No. I'm not gonna give you DKP. Fine then. There's, uh, the guild is slash, already. Flash breakup. The guild is already trying to start a mutiny. Can you imagine if Good, I and pandered I'm to, the, to my girlfriend? Now. No, you're not. I'll take a yes, no, you yes, join that you, mutiny, you're, you're gonna, gonna take lose my DKP. DKP. <sighs> I will absolutely remove DKP if you join that. But you did a great job. You got an A. So based on your classic WoW knowledge and overall gaming skill, it is acceptable. People will be losing DKP. You are not one of them. You Why? couldn't because based on what you have labeled yourself as as a gamer and your overall classic knowledge, I think you're a six eight. An A will suffice. If you labeled yourself as an eight slash eight, so classic well knowledge eight and gamer eight, I would have taken away two DKP or one, something like that. Because there's an expectation to be met when you label yourself like that. Grayson, if he doesn't ace this test, will be losing a lot of DKP. And I'm gonna knock him down from a 10 because it's just stupid. Why are you still talking to me? I'm broken up. 
Okay. All right, babe. Good luck, Lovely. Oh, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Oh, okay, I'm hanging up. Okay. Sometimes you get a bad apple neighbors, even in a nice neighborhood. Yes, you are. I'm not even That's from here. This guy's being a weirdo. She's following me around to the trash can. No, I haven't. I've been walking recording. Around. I'll back in. And of course, I minding my own business. Whip. You know, bro. Like, look at him, bro. He's like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my god, bro. I gotta deal with this bitch. <laughs> He's so stressed out. You're business. A fucking whip. Hey, what? Okay, now I have to call the police. No, I'm sitting in my fucking stoop, buddy. What? You're gonna what? Hey. What is going on? What? What is she doing? What is she doing? Hey, what are you doing? He's just trying to de-escalate it. He's really trying, bro. Like, he's doing his best. Weapon? What are you doing? You have a weapon? No, babe. Close the door, ass. Quit. Quit. I mean, I don't know, like, if I had this problem with somebody, I would just wait for them to touch me or hit me, and then i just call the police. Then i wait for them to come by, explain the situation, show them the video. All right, so that's what happened. There we go. I just think, like, if somebody tries to assault you physically, you've got every right to defend yourself, right? Of course, I don't really care. If somebody tries to hit you, you hit them. All good to me. Yeah, what if you were the boyfriend? I don't know. I'd probably just try... I would probably do the exact same thing as her boyfriend. You know, he probably doesn't want to break up with her right then. You know, maybe this is like the moment that he realizes that he's going to have to do it. But he probably doesn't want to have to deal with it exactly right then. So it's like, just tell her what she wants to hear, solve this problem, and then try to move on. All right, God forbid we invalidate a woman. It's not about invalidating her. It's because she's a crazy person. And you don't want to make a crazy person... Like, this is what happens whenever you have- look at this. This is a wild animal, bro. Like, you think you want to make this thing mad? No! You ever try to reason with a wild boar? Well, they don't listen. War mode has one map. Cutthroat is... Ready, fellas? We'll play- we'll play some Call of Duty. We'll see- we'll see. We'll see how we feel about it. I can give you some of my critiques. We can play a few matches. Maybe check out some of the modes. It is kind of funny that, um... 
that they brought back the war mode from COD World War II, and it, and the and it only has like one one map, and it's like I feel like it's the exact same fucking map, or, or the same style as uh, one that was in COD World War II. All right, let's swap over. <clears throat> <laughs> Do I need to zoom in my camera a little bit? I'm kind of off to this side. Huh? There we go. Yeah, I'm more centered now. But are they building a bridge? That is a good question. You know what is kind of funny though? I don't know if you guys also noticed this, but the announcers are so fucking boring in this game. They're so fucking boring. And I'll give I'll give Vanguard and COD World War II some props because at least that shit was memorable, you know? They're building a bridge. Wait, can we watch that clip real quick? I, this is like one of my favorite edits. Bang, 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 bang. That is not the left monitor. There we go. Okay, we're gonna put this on. Uh oh. Yeah, I wanna I wanna watch this clip real quick. Cause even though oh wait. Long, low quality, they're building a bridge extended. Even though the announcers are like, you know, they're, they're like super cheesy and whatnot. It, you know, it was memorable. Wait, okay. This is, this is the moment you've been waiting for. Keep the enemy from building the bridge. The enemy is building a bridge. The bridge is being built. The bridge is half built. The enemy is building a bridge. Stop the enemy from building that bridge. They're building a bridge. Ah, <laughs> oh, it gets me every time. I still love that fucking edit. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, they, it's, you remembered that guy because because at least he was annoying and not boring you know and this one it's just like the announcers are just boring it's really sad uh op 40 theme from bo1 supremacy thank you big regret thank you al Gichi and mr phase phase can bon von again pepper do i love your content been watching for years i know said tattoo not too long ago can you show it off and explain it rq what's rq yeah it's just a yin yang with fire and water the funny part about when i went to get the fire and water i thought he was he was gonna go up to like right here and then he just kept going like he went all the way down here to this part of my arm and i was like well this <laughs> I guess this is this is what I look like now. Okay, what should we play? Also, it's really sad that this is it. Like, if they had demolition in this game, or just more game modes for these old maps, I would be way happier. If I, if I could just play demolition again. And then you got war mode. Okay, so war mode has one map. Cutthroat is three teams of three. I don't know if I really care about that. Ground war has three maps. This is essentially the exact same as last year. And then invasion, I assume, is the exact same as last year. So you don't really have any anything new the only thing new is like the maps actually no that's not new because they're just all taken from a game from 14 years ago bleeding jesus i know right yeah also i'm not sure why the game is like recommending weapons to me like i i don't know what the fuck that's about 
Does anybody know, like, what? Why are some weapons in rotation for a limited time? Like, why are these recommended? At least they have the FAMAS, I guess. They're just for challenges. Also, I have, like... Is this... Because I got a code for the game. Are these two things from the Vault Edition? Is that what it is? Because I was wondering why I had these. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because I got a code. It's also kind of like, you know, look at how many guns there were in Modern Warfare 2. And then just like... <sighs> I've been having trouble finding guns that I really like using. Although, one thing I do like is that uh, you can add noob tubes without it uh, fucking up your aim down sight speed. That is a good change. Yeah, I like that. But also, what's fucked up is like when you go to any optics now on any gun you have, like you just have a thousand unlocked. It's nice for options, but man. Man, it's, it's kind of rough. Okay. Yeah, so I got this class. I do this thing where... Uh, I always rename... Ever since Modern Warfare 2, I've renamed my COD classes after uh, Dragon Ball Z characters. Who else should I get in here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Krillin, Gohan, Tien, Yum, Freezer. Am I missing anyone? Ah, yeah, also, wait, let's see if, let's see if this glitch still happens. So if I go to Gunsmith, ah, yes, <laughs> yes, it still happens. Watch this shit. I can, I can do this every single time. Watch, okay. Uh, I want to change my attachments on this gun. Yeah, okay, let's take this barrel off. Actually, let's put it back on. Back on. Uh, take the stock off, put the stock back on. If I want to, ch if I click this. Light oops. Oops. <laughs> like, what the fuck is, <laughs> what the fuck is that? I guess it's cool they brought back the UMP-45. Anyways, let's. Only two mods at a time. What does that mean, mods? Is it a mod to... Yeah, look, it happens every... At least it doesn't crash the game, you know? I guess that's something. Okay. I think my kill streaks are good. Mosquito drone. What are these? Oh, daily challenge. What? Complete daily challenge to unlock the kill streak, motherfucker. Huh? What the fuck is that? Unlock by completing the armory unlock. This progression system is fucked up. My GT is hot mommy beaver hole. That's amazing, Woodsy Jones. Shushi, thanks for the two. And for becoming a member. And for giving seven. What do I think of Goofy Cosmetics being in COD? I feel like... I feel like if they were to do that every other year, I would be fine with it. But it's just like... You guys want to see some fucked, something fucked up? So, if you, so all these, you know, tie-in guys and, and operators they have, you know... But then you go over to Skeletor. And it's Skeletor TM. You see that shit? Skeletor TM. They put a fucking trademark on it in Call of Duty. Just just in case you thought Skeletor was from Call of Duty. You know, just in case you were confused about that. <laughs> Skeletor TM. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, so I've... I've uh, I saw, I was seeing people run around as, as this fucking guy, and he doesn't have a shirt on, so I was like, dude, why is Rambo in this game? 
I saw him from behind. I was like, is that fucking Rambo? It's so, it's so fucking cursed. Like Call of Duty is just trying to be uh, Fortnite. At, at least you have uh, this this Irish guy, this Irish stereotype. You're thick as shit, you bleeding waster. <laughs> now hand me a point of Guinness. Fortnite. Rambo isn't caught. I know, right? <laughs> Would COD benefit from taking some time off? They were supposed to take some time off this year. Activision actually said they were they were stopping with the uh, yearly release, and then they were like, "Nah, fuck it. Never mind." All right, let's see how this goes. Yeah, they wanted more money. Is it worth $70? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No fucking shot. Wasteland. You know, guys, I, uh... Why did I spawn with one less bullet? I'll be honest, I, uh... Wait, what the... F okay. I actually really like Wasteland. Oh, what is this? This is control? Attack me! Easy. Whoop. Yeah, see, it's a little too, uh... It's a little too easy to outmaneuver people. We should have had him. People can just move around in rooms super fast. Fuck. Okay, I hit melee instead. Modern movement classic maps. It does not work as well as, as you might want it to. Switching mics. Yeah, it's because attack sprint. Yeah, it's... Really? That sniper's a one-hit kill to the knee. Interesting. Normally, it's like you have to get a body shot or something. What? How's the performance? How's the frame rate? I, mean, I could stop. Oh, yeah. Let me stop. This for a week, unfortunately. And Dratnos, do you think we have any other, uh, any other things? Nope, nothing there. Uh, good luck, Frank. Congrats on getting to edit together this new scuffed version we're going to send you. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right, cool. And uh, shout out, uh, Asmin and uh, your audience. Thanks for really, really just an awesome, awesome talk today. So hopefully, hopefully this is a uh, retail on its way back with the war within. And uh, we can, well, we may have you back on in the future. Oh, yeah. Thanks. I mean, yeah, I had a lot of fun. And uh, if you want to have me back on in the future, I'm usually around, right? I mean, shit, playing WoW, talking about WoW, it's what I do. So it's okay. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a good oh, wait, time. Wait, I have one question before we do. Yeah. Um, real quick. So I don't look at your chat, and I'm gonna ask you something, and I want. Okay. <laughs> I have do my you, eyes closed. You, okay. Uh, what comes to your mind when I say succulent? Um, cactus. Fuck but that's me, only man. Be because that's only because of Starfield that has the succulents that look like cactuses. Because if it wasn't for that. I would think of something a lot more dirty. I was thinking of Rawl. You guys know what I'm talking about? Bro. No. You like the Rawl and Gluttonous from Waycross Manor? Yeah, he was like, mmm, <laughs> succulent. Okay. 
Fox News alert now. U.S. forces strike a weapons faculty a facility over in Syria. This comes just hours after the Iranian-backed militants launched their 42nd U.S. base uh, attack on a the 42nd U.S. base in uh, uh, October by, since October 17th. Look at all those hits on that map. Our next guest says American troops are sitting ducks overseas while Biden is in office and vows not to make the same mistake. Fresh off the GOP debate just hours ago, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis joins us now. Governor, did you? I don't know if you have a, have a, a monitor there, but 40 something, 40 plus attacks since the 17th of October. You've been in Iraq. Uh, I'm not sure if you've been into Syria, but 900 guys there, 2,500 in Iraq, and you can't hit back? No one's watching your back? I mean, what is that like? Well, yeah, right. I mean, I, I look, I, I did see the map, and you have places um, like uh, Al-Assad Air Base and some of these other places that, um, you know, we were involved in, and for sure, and so to see that. So here, when we have American troops in harm's way, uh, we do not let hostile force, hostile enemies take hot shots at us without an appropriate response. And Joe Biden is basically allowing the Iranians to attack our troops, and his responses are underwhelming, so it's just inviting more attacks. And so just from a normal perspective. Now, I would also say this. What is their mission there? Biden hasn't hasn't really articulated what their mission there is, presumably some type of counterterrorism mission. But I would note we have terrorists coming in across our southern border. He's not doing anything about to stop that. And we know, unfortunately, that that's the truth. So I think we get into trouble if we're putting our troops in places where we don't have a clear mission or clear objective. Iraq's government at this point, um, yes, there's a Sunni Shia conflict, but it's like, OK, their Shia government is aligned with Iran. They are hostile to the United States, and we have our troops in there to potentially prop that government up. So it's a, it's really an odd situation, but clearly I think he's inviting more attacks on our troops. He, does, he says, I don't want to start World War III, so he's being measured, but it seems as if when you hit an empty we uh, weapons depot, it, it almost looks like weakness. Uh, yesterday, President Trump went after you while you were working on the debate stage. He was working on the stump. Here's him. He's going after you on this. And unlike Ron DeSanctimonious, I will always protect Social Security and Medicare. He did not protect it. He wanted to do bad things to it for our great senior citizens. Everyone says, oh, he did so well. He did well because I endorsed him. So we do have to attack entitlements. You guys did talk about that on the stage last night. What is the truth about your stance on Social Security? Well, basically, Trump is attacking me for positions that he's always held. So, for example, in 2012 uh, against Obama, Romney, Ryan, you know, I supported them. So did Trump. He said that their proposals were, were solid. So a lot of that is just opportunistic. But the idea that he is responsible for Florida's success is absurd. And when he says he endorses, and somehow that means, if, if his endorsement was so important, why have Republicans been losing so many of these races where he's endorsed? We have fewer governors than when he got elected president, fewer U.S. senators, fewer U.S. House members. Um, and here in Florida, a lot of what we did to really put the state uh, and separate our state from many other states during COVID, we were done where people in his administration were attacking me. Tony Fauci attacking me for having kids in school, for having restaurants and the gyms and all that open, and that really helped the state take off. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure, you know, what he's saying about any of that. But look, he had a chance to show up and he had a chance to, to make his case. He's choosing not to right. do that. I do think in these early states, these voters are starting to key in, and, and I do think it's going to hurt him. I think you saw some of these focus groups that said he should show up to debate. Uh, we've got Americans being held hostage right now by Hamas. I mean, the stakes are high. Uh, you have a responsibility to, to earn this nomination and also defend your record. I mean, he's running. On, I, I saw the rally, a little bit of it. And it reminded me like it's like deja vu all over again. You go back to 2016, mm -hmm. he's saying a lot of the same things and promising a lot of the same things he didn't deliver on. Border wall built with Mexico paying for it didn't happen. Drain the swamp didn't happen. 
reducing the debt didn't happen. We added more. So why not right. get on that stage and explain uh, and then articulate how you're going to do a better job the next time. So I think it is going to hurt him if he doesn't show up. Uh, I'm going to show up. I'm going to be at the debates. I'm going to be on the ground in the early states, and we're going to earn it. And right now, uh, Governor, you had your three, uh, three debates, three presidential, uh, presidential debates. There was only five people on the stage. You all had just about the same amount of time. Uh, how did you feel out there compared to the other times? And how did you feel about the personal attacks and Vivek, who's coming on next hour, when he brought up Nikki Haley's daughter? Well, I think I think the kids are out of bounds. I, I didn't I didn't think that was an appropriate thing to do. It's not something that I do. Um, and you know, we I have a six five and a three year old, and and they're they're out of bounds. I mean, this is yeah. not something they've asked to be involved in. So I keep the kids out of it for sure. Well, look, I think two things, Brian. One, uh, I spoke directly to the American people about the issues facing the country. I didn't wasn't worried about debating the moderators. Really, wasn't even worried about debating the other candidates as much as articulating my vision directly about how I'll fight for people, uh, how we'll win these big fights, and how. We'll Will lead the country to an American revival. But then the other thing is, is of all but up there, I have a record of actually doing things. I mean, even on the Hamas Israel, I was able to say Biden abandoned Americans. He wasn't helping evacuate in the aftermath of the attack by Hamas. So I sent planes and we rescued 700 plus Americans, mostly Floridians, a lot of children. Some of them may have ended up becoming right. hostage. And we're talking about the threat of the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, I banned China from buying land in the state of Florida. We kicked them out of our universities with these things like these Confucius Institutes, uh, which do the ideology. Gotcha. So it's not just rhetoric with me. I've backed it up with actions. Ultimately, right. it's not just your words, it's your deeds. So people can trust me that everything I'm saying, uh, I'm going to follow through on because that's exactly what I've done as governor. And we'll see how many people show on the stage next time because the criteria is going up, up, up. Governor Ron DeSantis, thanks so much. Uh, best of luck the rest of the way. I know you're digging in in Iowa. Appreciate it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. Yo, how we doing tonight? Good to see you. Welcome back to the Covency Evening Stream. We are chill chilling. We are, we are, uh, what the fuck? What? How did I get level 16? Who did all these quests in here? Oh, man. Well, I guess we're just going to have to keep playing from here. That's fine. Dub Live just died. Oh, Dub Live, level 2? Oh, really? Is that you? Dub Live. Uh, a guild member just died recently. I saw, I saw what Dowski said. Is that a Dowski D's nuts joke? I don't see him anywhere. He must have been uh, recently. What level was he? <clears throat> well, there, that has never happened. Yeah. Dub Live, what happened, dude? Got killed by a Timberwolf. Why does it have a star by it? Bogs and L, thanks for the 38, dude. Appreciate it. Good luck in Westfall. Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, Abby, how you doing tonight? Do I have a list of add-ons? I do, in the file add-ons command. Rough times, huh, adventurer? Or no matter where you turn, someone needs help, and my wife and I are no exception. Good work, friend. You have earned your pay well. Who knows, perhaps Westfall will prosper once again. Special chicken. Wait, this is human food? The special chicken feed is this made out of people? Why do I feel like this is made out of people? Go with honor, friend. Uh, okay. 
have to? Okay, we're good. All right, let's go up and get, we need to get this Pearl Brow Pocket Watch. Look at that real quick. I'm gonna head on up. You co stop using the second Twitch channel? No, 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 I'm just, I'm just stocking up my hours on this Twitch channel for this, uh, for now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all my, my contractual obligations out of the way. And I'm streaming a little longer than normal in the evenings because of this damn game. So I figured this is a good time to knock him out. Yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, 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 yep. What's over here? Oh, where's my small feline? My spirit animal. There we go. Look how small he is. Can I name him? Can I name White Kitten? I wish I had a heart. I need a heart icon. Why don't I have a heart icon? I guess a moon is kind of okay. I guess we can work with this. <laughs> Gamer Penny, thanks for the 114, dude. My lord. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, I got the Voidwalker bubble. So how do I use this? I, I just got this sacrifice thing. I'm assuming this is a, an open weapon thing. Is that how it works? Like another another way to hopefully not get killed, basically. Yeah, it's an ocean. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, where is this thing I'm looking for? One here? All right, let's get this back. Actually, let's go over here real quick. We gotta bust out some null paws. Watch out for those defias cutthroats. They've been getting kill streaks. Oh yeah, pretty brutal. That spell isn't ready yet. Gotta kill this coyote. What add on is the deathlock stuff? That's still recharging. Deathlock. Uh oh. Pack leader. Help me, small cat. Why are you howling, bro? I think these are what I need right here. Jangaloed mine. Okay. Don't you run from me, bro. Get back here. Go get your comeuppance. I need to get that spell that makes it so the enemy doesn't run. I think that is my five. Will I play Path of Exile next week? Uh, maybe. When, when does the new Path of Exile League come out? I was really having fun with my RF. My first RF build last time. I don't want to do that again. Early December? Oh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, that's when Rogue Trader is. I mean, we'll 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 see. We'll see. I'm fully anticipating that Rogue Trader will take up a good amount of time. <clears throat> make a new character. I'm gonna make a new character when I do a drinking stream, but right now I'm still on steroids for this cough that I've had recently. So I figured it's probably not a good idea to to do a drinking stream when I'm on steroids. So we're gonna wait on that a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna make either a hunter or a rogue. I think. 
Any idea what class you're going for Rogue Trader? I have no idea. I really liked the Gunner from the Alpha. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind maybe having two of those in my party. That Gunner was sick. So, maybe that. We'll see. Maybe that. Oh, that's a, I need a hundred herbals. It's so bad. It's too far away. Falling behind a little bit. Oh shoot! Are these going down? Health holding steady. First dungeon when, bro? I have no idea. I don't even know how that stuff works, to be honest. That spell isn't ready yet. Drum twenty. Okay. Evening, Nasai. Looney says almost 69. Also, thanks for being awesome, creating a space where even more awesome and amazing people can come together. I appreciate it, dude. Thank you for your 67 months. Kill ya, buddy. Kill ya. Kill ya. One more bizarre. Hey, about four ninja, how are you? I see bongos, I play bongos. Oh, and aside, I have no idea what my plans are for dungeons, dude. <laughs> no clue. I, I do not even know if I'm going to do them. We'll see. Yeah, dungeon's scary. Oh, I need to get more of my... Um, my soul suck points. Suck points. Mm-hmm. Dang, what am I even up to? 93. I need seven more points to get these dang herbs out here. I'm so angry right now. I need to get closer. I need a freaking herbalism 100. Falling behind, chat. I don't like it. I don't like it. <clears throat> Did I finish a new Yakuza game? Almost. Almost. Okay. I'll turn this quest in and then this quest, and then we'll go work on whatever the hell this is. Looks dangerous. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Ninja. How are you? Rip Uwu just died. That's a fitting game. Will we see some WoW in the mornings? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow morning. I think I might do a WoW morning tomorrow morning and then finish Yakuza in the afternoon. I think. Something like that. The side, the more you know, man. The more you know. <clears throat> Already finishing Yakuza? Yeah. 
What's the moon thing? Uh, it marks adorable small felines, like myself. Mm-hmm. Did Code do that seer quest? Oh, oh, the one in the other zone? No. no. I'll sub if you remove the moon. Dub, was that you that died earlier? Hey there. My watch. Thank you so much, ah, man, sir. Bro, we are but poor farmers food. and we have lost our land, but please hey. accept this reward as a token of our appreciation. Where's the moon above your head? Can I, can I raid mark this? Got gobbled, chat. Slayed by a gobbler. Well done, adventurer. Bracer of the people's militia. Is that like the people's eyebrow? The people's militia. Westfall just might return to the prosperous breadbasket it once was. Please accept this in recognition of your tireless efforts. <laughs> Any reason Cohen hardcore instead of retail? Um, because hardcore is enjoyable for me. Your car's extended warranty. We've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Joking, hope you have a great time playing the game. Oh, I was hoping he was gonna do like a whole thing. Best regards of your Well, thank you, I appreciate it. I was kinda hoping that was gonna be like six pages long. Welcome to my in weary trip. All right, let's see. Uh, you and you and you. I've now that I'm a uh, chef and all these different things can be chefed up. I'm kind of paranoid about selling things. Person doesn't want your item. Well, I didn't want you to buy it anyway, you dick. Um, so that. Let's see, can I do anything with a with horny? Let's go see what I can cook. Be careful. Buy back the feathers and AH it? Really? Are they that? <clears throat> Milk is better than water? Yeah, I was looking at that. Oh, I should, I should probably use that, right? White items are usually mats for crafting. Okay. Buy this back. Buy more water. Um, Lake on zero, zero, zero. See you later. Federal flight control would like to welcome you to this facility. 
fine for a little more mild spices. Nope, those are hot spices. Automated docking confirmed. Have a good one. Nice. Nice. What's my cat's name? Oh. In game? Uh, Gary Keen. Make coyote steaks. Here we go. Some of these. Lighting gear deployed. I don't think I can make anything else with chunks of war meat. Yeah, all all the boar meat stuff is like too low level. Okay, so maybe I'll just sell the boar meat. Contact deploying I supply food. only the finest goods. the bolt for me. Smell that. All the bread. I got these really good pies, so I don't really need other stuff right now. I barely use that stuff anyway. I just need inventory space. See you make around. Here? I can make a juvie potion. I don't really need that. I think I have a defense potion. Let's do that. Incoming message. Pop you. Pop you. Pop you. Oh, I need this. I need more earth. Incoming message. Incoming message. Why did Co decide to play this and not just classic? Because frankly, a lot of a lot of my like streaming buds and and people that I knew were playing on hardcore, and I've never played hardcore before, so I kind of wanted to jump in and try it. Oh wait, I don't know what is is guild. I can't I can't I don't know what they did with guild. They installed like I think guild chat is not really guild chat anymore or something. I'm not even sure. Everything's confusing and strange now. Congrats in your progression so far. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's like two guilds merged. But I think you have to install... Did I install Greenwall? I don't even know if I installed Greenwall. Maybe I did. So we need a bunch of stuff over here. Highwayman, Pass Stalker, and Knuckle Duster. And it looks like they're down here? Maybe up here? Looks like there's more than a few people up here, so that's good. Makes me feel a little safer. Oh, here we go. Are any of these dudes range? That's what I've learned I really gotta look out for. That's what's gonna kill me. Freaking range mob is gonna be what takes me down. Those things hurt. They hit hard. They can shoot from a ways. 
The WoW OST is so chill. Dude, the, the WoW music is fantastic. I don't remember at all if you're being this, uh... It's good. It's really nice. Very chill. Need to keep a sharp out for Defias Pillagers. They hurt. Are oh, those are the mages, right? Yep. Yep, agreed. They hurt a lot. Is this too much? Is this guy too close? Let's find out. playing WoW? Uh, yeah, it looks like it. Crazy. You know. So, going going over, I, I need to be thinking about this at all times. Still recharging. So if I get in, like, the deepest of deep trouble, what I'm gonna do, first thing I do, is I pop my shield off my name, bro. And I've got shift one, shift two, shift three. I can go down that list. Oh, did I already use it? I already used it. Damn. I can't cast that yet. Where are you going? Okay, Commander, it's currently unavailable. You'll still be covered by five kilometers of the carrier. Thanks. Alright. Pop this guy back out. Docking request accepted. You are welcome to approach. Let's get the buff on too while we're thinking about it. Oh, don't ever turn your back on a on a mob with backstab because they can actually backstab you. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that existed. I didn't know mobs backstabbing me was a thing. a level 17 quest. so bad. Okay. I'm gonna not do this. Uh, oh, I have my shield on, chat. Yeah. This area, this area is a little out of my league. Um. this guy 16 okay 
So where else can I go? Can, should I go back to the dwarven area? I need I need a different I need a different place to be. Dark Shore. Okay. What's how do I get to Dark Shore? Pick up boat. Charging. Portia says, do not go to Dark Shore. Risky. Well, I don't want to do anything. The whole point of this is finding something that's not risky. Hold up. Wait up. Am I going to do that? I can go back to the dwarf. Yeah, I could go back to the dwarf area now. We could go back to the dwarf area. I could go to Stormwind and see if I can find a port. Apparently, finding a port is a good idea. Red Ridge Mountain Quest start at 15. Dark Shore isn't that bad. There's more melee-based mobs here than casters. Oh, are you there now? Okay. Where's Red Ridge's death? That is very split on this. I'm 16 right now. Dark Shore is the place to be. Okay. So. Let's go back to. You can get a port to Darnassus for safe route to Dark Shore. Let's do that. Let's go see if we can find a port to Darnassus. <coughs> Let's try that. Can I, like, pay for someone to get a port there? Where are you going? Well, if you're looking to get there quickly, then look no further. Okay. Cost of gold? Minimum cost is 20 silver. Can you call an Uber? Do the wetlands run? I'm not even sure what that that means, man. Sounds a little, sounds a little scary. Whoa! <laughs> Look at all those names. I love it. Wetlands is dangerous due to level 20 plus. Oh, so let's not do that. I don't, I don't want to Google anything, guys. Oh, food services. What's this red thing mean? Offline. Oh, no, he's not here. Oh, 55 human mage. I've got 34 silver. Let's see how much this guy uh, wants.
Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Did I click it? Oh, no, I didn't pay him! Oh, dude. I just scammed this man. Um, I'll mail it. I'll mail it. I didn't know that's how it worked. <laughs> that was the biggest dick move ever. <coughs> oh, dude, you sure? Wow, what a what a boss. All right, thanks, man. Where where am I? Carnassus. Oh, this is, this is the night up town. Okay. They usually charge before they drop the portal if they're going to. Okay. Attention all passengers. This carrier has scheduled a hyperspace jump. Please conclude any remaining business in this system prior to departure. Classic hardcore. I wonder if it's gonna be somebody else that walks off the ship again. I, I'm pulling imps now. Wait for them to stack. Dude, I love watching the raid clips. Because at that point, you know that they have invested collectively thousands of hours into one fuck up. Here we go. Then I'll stop them. Sapper. Guys, try not to blizzard before my sapper goes out. It's a little awkward. Alright, cross the corner. If hunters, if you see a good spot to get a surger. If we get too high, you just pick up a second. Stack on it. Can't you just banish it? But why don't they just banish the surger? I get the second. Stay stacked, stay stacked. Just banish the skull. It. There's the skull. You got Imps as well. Imps as well. Hi, uh, Sapper. Pop your oh my- up. oh my god! Oh, what the oh, fuck? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, Petri, no. Petri, Petri! There it is. Nice, right, light of a Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out. Get out. Roach, 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 roach! Roach out, boys, roach out! I'm sorry, I- I didn't spot the Imps coming in fast enough. Jesus, bro, that was a full wipe! Look at them! That's over a dozen people dead! Gone forever! And not a single warlock banished! Oh, oops! <laughs> oops! Oh, oops! All he needed to do, all one warlock, there are three warlocks in this raid, not a single one of them thought, Hey, maybe I should do a banish. Nah, bruh. Nah. Why would you press a button if you could sit there and do nothing? Let's go. It's not the way it's well. To be fair, it is primarily the raid leader's fault. But if I was the warlock, I would have automatically banished, even if the raid leader told me not to. I'm going to be honest. I would have banished it. I would have said, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You are an idiot. I am banishing this mob immediately. The imps killed them? No. What killed them? So the surger... So, Lava Surgers, what they do is they do an ability called Surge. And I think it's actually called Charge. But they Surge, and they will do an AoE knockback and a massive amount of damage to everybody at the uh, area that's being, that they are surging to. So, as you can see here, the Surger does one knockback, and you see he just surged into those mobs. And then this is what happens stay when stack, you have a second stack. Surger. Stay the skull. And you have no, him, well. boom, there's the second surge right there. Oh, it's as well. Hi, uh, Sapper. And then, of course, you down. have another one that happens. Those oh, are knockbacks from the surgers. Oh, the no. The imps were nothing. The imps were just, like, inconsequential. The imps did right, damage. Get out, it was get out, bad, get out, get out, get out, but it was get out, primarily get out, get out, the surgers. A full molten core wipe. Jesus. God. That's bad. That's really bad. I'm sorry, I, I didn't spot the imps coming in fast. Imagine if this was Sword Art Online. Yeah, true. 
Wow. That's a long run back. Yeah, you have to run all the way back from Ellen Forest. Yeah, I'm in the water though. I need to hold the phone. Okay. <laughs> so we're in Zulgura. Uh -oh. Parked on the fucking bridge. Right yeah, yeah, that's not you did your dying oh you didn't speak victory. You're dead. Oh, I said, I said, I said, come. Lee, down, lee, lee, down, lee, down, lee, 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 Dude, imagine getting killed by a fish. Like, you're just, dude, you're, you're getting got by a fish, man. The real reality check there. What a save? Yeah, it was a good save. That's actually a god priest. Okay, here we go. Big DPS on skull, boys. That needs to die fast. Wait, did you have PP? Yeah, guys. Oh, so, okay. what the f Pee -pee. Yeah, guys, so what the fuck? So, already, oh, Jesus boys. All, dude, I love how he says already because that confirms this is the beginning of the run. This is just the beginning. Let's pull his shit. So, what the fuck? Oh, the problem is this, right? DPS on skull, boys. That needs to die fast. Look at the damage on all the other mobs. All the other mobs are getting damaged too. People probably, like, this guy ran away. See, he watch. Yeah, See, he didn't guys, even take so damage because he ran away. Did this guy take damage? Yeah, guys. Maybe so he had a partial resist. And this guy was gone too. Oh, okay. what the fuck? Already? Oh, That's what you get. Boys, what's going on? That's what you get. That's life. What what? There's no what shot, bro. Pop we your GFPP. We just hit 50. Yeah. We already possibly get out. 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 In order for a classic player to hear something, you have to tell it to them. The number is actually four times. So if you want a person to listen to what you do, you have to tell them the same thing four times. Here we go. A level 60 druid. Oh, it's a lot of mobs. Ooh, that's a lot of mobs. Ooh, that's a lot of mobs. Ooh, man, that's a lot of mobs. Ooh, oh, dude, wow. Right now, what oh, what wow, that's a lot of mobs. Guys, I think that's a lot of mobs. Oh, I don't know about this. That's a nice bot. Good bot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, wow, it's a lot of... I'm fucking dead! Oh, what my fuck, God! Dude? I'm fucking dead, dude! Holy oh, shit! Oh my god, I died! Oh my god! Dude, you lose your- you're a healer and you just lose because of aggro. Oh my god! I can't fucking heal aggro and just fucking die. I would just lose my fucking mind, man. I'm gonna be honest. I would be so furious. I would want to kill somebody, bro. I would be so fucking upset, bro. I would want to- I would want to jump out of fuck, bro. Like, level 60? You got a fully geared character. I would be so fucking mad just to just to just die, bro. Like you just just fucking die. Like what the fuck? God. This guy, by the way, does big dick damage. Like this dude does crazy fucking damage. Usually, you gotta kite him around on like that uh, uh that bridge, the ramp. I mean. Watch, I'll show you guys how much damage it does. Get ready. So, let me slow him up. See this guy? Okay, he feigns. Okay, so the paladin. I really think any time that I see a paladin tanking, I just know that, like, the group is stupid. Paladins are not supposed to be tanks. Paladins are not supposed to be DPS. Paladins are healers. They heal. If you're playing a paladin and you're not healing, you're doing it wrong. Now, can you do it? Yes, you can do it, but it's a worse and inferior version of the game, and you are just a worse version of a better class. Anytime 
I see somebody playing with a prop paladin. They're retail WoW Andy's. Yes, exactly. Go to Wrath of the Lich King and say that. Why would I say that in Wrath? In Wrath, that's not the case. Paladins are better than warriors in Wrath. Yeah, if you're playing a warrior in Wrath, you're stupid. You should be playing a paladin. Well, I'm talking about classic. It's not Wrath. Okay. Ooh. Did you? Uh, bro, look at him. So this guy dies just by getting instigated. The paladin is backpedaling. What happened? And then the, this is, by the way, this is your main tank. Oh, guess who's not in the group anymore? That's right, your main tank. Boop. There it is. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, he's roaching. Oh, oh, time to roach. Let's roach. Let's go. Let's get out of here. We got to get out of here right now. Yep, you left the group already. <laughs> hey, guess, guys. Mm. Damn, two people dead? <laughs> Am I the only person who finds it hilarious that <laughs> the tank is the last on aggro? <laughs> he's the last on the aggro table. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh that my god. Like right on. All oh, right. these kill you immediately. Watch, I'll show you what I mean. He's gonna die Good right shit. about now. You agree it's with the that. poison right they on. do. Right. Permit the uh, frog. Uh oh. Here we go. No, I wasn't talking about you, Plush. No. He's so happy. I just Kermit and Watch, he's, he's going to stop right? being happy right now. See, like, you can see the poison, right? And so what happens is, like, these poison clouds, what they do is they kill you. Watch. No gravity. Magnetic contact active. He's piggy. Pro. <gasps> Dude. Dude. Dude, come on. What are you doing? What is going on, man? I kind of wonder how long it would have taken for him to notice. Like, if he hadn't died, like, how long would he have stood in the poison to realize, hey, I'm in the poison? Like, maybe, like, a minute? 30 seconds? Jesus. This is, by the way, this is the fastest classic WoW player with the fastest reactions in the entire game. Bro? Prospect's all based on you taking damage, right? Oh my god. Oh my god, he's talking about it again? Cause look at this, this guy's- Oh, what a fucking idiot. Why are you playing a prot paladin? Landing gear retracted. Ship released. Move clear of the landing pad. So when we're fighting the mobs, bud, we should nice, we should nice. stand back and we should we should let you charge into. Watch it. Okay. Oh my fucking retracted. god! It's the traps. That's right. These are traps. I forgot all about this. Holy shit. It's the rogue chest trap. This is for the quest for lock picking for rogue. The rogue is doing the quest. He activates one of the chests. He opens it. The trap happens and it kills the guy who just lost the duel. Natural selection. That's a fucking duel. Why would you duel here? Why would you duel? Oh my fuck. I fucking told you not. Jenna said when. But down. You know what's a really good idea, by the way? In case you were thinking about playing Classic WoW, the one thing you don't want to do is hit the key, it's V on your um on your uh, keyboard. Because it puts like these really annoying things over every mob. It's called a nameplate. You never want to hit that key. Yet you do not want nameplates, guys. Nobody wants nameplates. They're so bad. 
Like they're just oh bro, like nobody wants any points. They've got me dying for content. They have to be. I was four. Ah, sit on his Yeah, bro, you should have said that five minutes ago. Ryan, use your potion. Ron, use your potion. Go to defensive sands. Go to defensive sands. What are you clicking for? What are you clicking? Hooray! Oh, no. oh, he can't even see them. Oh, the name plates. What are you doing? He's gonna run into another mob. Guaranteed, he runs into another mob. He'll survive this one. He'll run into another mob. Wow! And he's hitting him. Why are you no. hitting him? No! Ah, there he is. See, bro, I fucking knew it. That's how it goes, guys. That is why you have nameplates. That is, this is the most deserved death we've seen so far. It's just the way she goes. <gasps> 37. No, sorry, th level 39. What could possibly go wrong? There she is. Turn her away. Turn her away. She does cleave. Big cleaves. Hop lips, hop lips. Hop lips, oh, people. Shit. Oh, fuck it. Where is the body? Oh, but why wouldn't you just... There she is. There she is. Turn her away, turn her away. She does cleave, big cleaves. Hop lips, hop lips. I mean, this dude was the tank. I'm trying to decide whose fault this is. There she is. Turn her away. Turn her away. She does. Does cleave. Big cleaves. Yeah, it's the tank's fault. So watch the uh, watch the tank. So here's the tank. We're gonna look at this frame by frame. So they said turn her away. Turn her away. Turn her away. She does. He didn't. He didn't do it. Cleave. Big cleaves. Because if he had done it, they wouldn't have taken that damage. Tank keeps her in in, in cleave range. He had no. This guy had to cancel his heal. Because the tank didn't follow directions. Yeah, the radio, because it wasn't... See, he didn't tell him four times. He only told him, I think, once or twice. So, like, it was not four... Yeah, it was instead of four... Yeah, so he, obviously the tank didn't really hear it. Yeah, it's the four times rule. And so that's why... I, I actually think this is the tank's fault. Because the healers never would have moved out if he had just pulled the boss and turned it away. And also, he would have never been able to need- he would have never needed to be told that if he understood what the mechanics were ahead of time. And I guarantee you, he was probably told- told that ahead of time whenever he was doing the boss fight. Like, leading up to the boss fight, somebody probably said, face the boss away for Cleave, and he didn't do it. So it's his fault. Turn away from what? Uh, the boss does like a cleave, right? So like, uh, the boss is facing forward and he does a cleave. So it's like everything in like this range, like hits, it hits everything, right? So you want to face the boss away from the ray. So if you have him to the side, it's not enough because they're still going to be in that cone, right? And that's what the tank did wrong. Hop lips, hop lips. Hop lips, oh, people. Oh, fucking no. They'll be fine, by the way. God. It's not a big deal. It oh, no. Oh, no. Thank you for choosing the station, Commander. We hope you find everything to your liking. Here we go again. Did not put anyone in danger, boys. This should be fine. Just CC. Request approved. Please head directly to our bank. Wait, what? You are approved for automated docking. Wait, uh, well, focus, boys, focus, boys. I love how they're just like, what? Oh, he died? Okay. It did not put anyone in danger, boys. Who was it that died? I'm trying to even see where the person is that died. Yeah, I can't even see him. In front of Star? Oh, 
Oh, there he is! Oh no! Uh oh! Uh oh! Ooh. Oh, what a bad mistake! Why is a priest there? Well, he's not anymore. Landing gear deployed. He shouldn't have been there. He deserved to die. I love to watch people who do not respect range for the tanks. I love to watch somebody who stands too close to the boss whenever a boss pull is going to happen. There is no reason to do that. Every time one of them gets killed, that's what you get. I love it. This was natural selection at its finest. That's what you fucking get. Wait, what? What? You should have never been there. You should have ne you are never going to fear. If you had feared, you would have aggroed the mobs on the right side. Fearing was the wrong option. Even if you thought it was the right option, you're still stupid. Should have been back here with everybody else. Wait, uh, well, focus boys, focus boys. Just kill the boss. Does he do a knockup? I think he needs to be up against the wall fighting this guy, right? <gasps> Divine intervention? <gasps> it was! It's divine intervention! Oh my god! Wait, what? Okay, so... In order to understand why this happened, you have to understand... 15 years ago... There was a strategy that people would use to farm bosses like this... By safe spotting them. And Blizzard at that point made a change to where if the boss didn't have a mob in aggro range... It would automatically teleport a mob out of aggro range into aggro range. And another good example of this happening is Joker. Joker, this exact same thing happened to Joker in this instance, but it was with the, I think it was a Hydra boss or something like that, instead of this boss. So, yes. I barely just remember that? Yes. And so they teleport you back if you get too far away. Block dick gauntlets. Those are really good. I did a retail thing. <sighs> Pulled too many mobs. You see him? He jumped down. What did he do? He jumped. No, down. no, no, no! Shut the fuck up! I did a retail thing. I jumped. Oh no, we're in as well. Jumped we need where? To run. No, shut Why the fuck up! Run. Run where? I, I, what the fuck I did you do? There. What? I oh my god! Run. What are you doing? No, what, what a stupid little bitch, man! What a stupid, annoying little bitch! He goes, I did a retail thing. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? And they're like, what are you talking about? He's like, I don't know. Like, dude, you need to tell them, everybody, run, I pulled a bunch of extra mobs. Like, what are you doing? What a piece of shit. It's not enough for him to jump off and mess everything up. But on top of that, he has to go and say this bullshit. Dude, <laughs> 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 Wait, run. Run. They're, they're, they're gonna hit the, um, the pat, like, in this next room here. <laughs> nah, that's an army <laughs> room. Probably, uh, right around this corner. Wait, I'll shut the door after. Nah, that is so <laughs> fucked yeah, go up. Go to the reset, go to the reset. But it's a retail uh, thing, even! No? I, I, I was just Maybe they were able to avoid it. So the thing no, pat right here. I think I'm dead. Okay, it doesn't matter. I guess they avoided it. Jesus, man. You know he's annoying in real life. I know. Yeah, it's hardcore. I know it's hardcore. I didn't think she'd do that again. I thought for sure she would... I thought for sure she would ask. I literally told her, I'm down here. Please don't unplug the Wi-Fi box. And then she comes to the basement door as I'm disconnecting and says, Hey, I unplugged the Wi-Fi box, but I only did it for two seconds. So I think you should be fine. I was like, that's not how the Wi-Fi works.
That's a person who untangles their internet cords so more internet will get through. Man. Trolled by a caveman. Yep. Uh, you're dead. I'm dead. Time to do the whole thing over again. So what you see here is what a lot of people in, 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 the, in the gaming industry refer to as a complete shit show. So if you look at every single aspect of this poll, you will see that not a single part of it is redeemable in any way. This is a absolute complete clusterfuck. Now, this is a roach out situation. Like I would roach out at this moment. I would be done. Now, obviously this guy's the tank. What does it mean to be the tank? It means to run Just away run. from Use the your mobs. Petri. Use your Petri. It means to run away from the mobs with your back turn them, turn to them Use your so, Petri and so leave you party. take more damage. Ooh, his last stand just fell off. Holy shit. Oh my god, what a fucking idiot. Why is it that people can't leave the group first and then Petri? You're not going to have enough time. You're not going to have... He's, he's going to... Like, how is it possible? Why is he announcing he's going to Petri? Because, again, like, you have to, you have to in, internalize classic WoW latency. So, while the latency in the game is improved, the latency in their minds is not. So, what that means is that now they're going to have to, like, you say it's about 10 seconds. Yeah, like, they're, they're making the game like it used to be in order to, like, kind of account for, like, the uh, older age. It's brain delay, yeah. Don't worry about it. When the, when it, uh, other, when the Petri wears off, use the other one. He should refresh it right when now. When it wears off. He should refresh it right now. I might die. I die. I think actually the fact that it, that it does, that it, it looks like a combat ship. This ship is specifically only for combat. It feels like home to me when I come back to this ship. It's the most comfortable to fly. There's something no nonsense about its shape. You just want to walk in somewhere and just stomp all over everything. It's obviously great. And um, with a wing of four on me, I still managed to kill him. And ever since I, I did that, I feel like I kind of fell in love with combat, specifically in the Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette. The Corvette! The Federal Corvette. The Federal Corvette. The Federal Corvette. Here it is, the end-all be-all of Federation firepower, and the undisputed king of the Hazrez, the Federal Corvette. And it's worth a moment to take it in. It lacks the polished composites and mirrored finish of its Imperial competition, but somehow it's just as beautiful. But then again, I do have a type. I'm not one for core dynamic styling, and frankly, I often think they modeled their ships off of doorstops. But the Corvette is different. There's something about it that speaks to you. You know what this ship is just by looking at it. You know what it's capable of. You know that it's dangerous. I don't even know where to start on this ship. This is, uh, it's been my go-to ship for the past, like, Two or three years. It it looks like it means business just sitting still. Just for me, the, the combat ship of choice. Nothing feels like a proper warship quite like the Corvette. 
And this isn't exactly shocking news. The Corvette is the combat ship of choice for a lot of commanders, and especially notorious for those who have seen it in action. It has a reputation. One that's well earned. This is the most heavily armed battleship in the galaxy. A ship armed with two class 4 hardpoints, an obscene amount of armor, and maneuvering thrusters that'll make a Viper pilot blush. And there's other good news too. There's enough internal slots in here that you can get fairly creative with your loadout, or you could just make the whole thing nigh indestructible with hull and shield reinforcements. A size 7 shield cell bank means that even if a group of overzealous religious wingnuts attacks you in mass, your prismatic shields may well never go down at all. And even if they do, it very well may take them several days to chew through the armor. And while my personal favorite ship technically has more damage per second, the Corvette will give you better time on target, and more of an excuse to laugh like a maniac. This, this ship that we're in right now is the first ship that I have done any meaningful combat in. I think the first version of the Cube Comper I was flying, I used cannons. And hearing those two cannons go off right behind you, that's amazing. And it can do any mission in the game, yet it still happens to be the best ship for clearing conflict zones. All this fire and fury has earned the ship the infamy it deserves. Just look at this view. Look at how dope that looks. Look at that. I'm flying a spaceship. Because there is no other ship that gives me the sense of unadulterated brute force that this ship does. It, it looks like it means business. Or you could just make the whole thing nigh indestructible with hull and shield reinforcements. And more of an excuse to laugh like a main. Look at how dope that looks. Look at that. I'm flying a spaceship. Because there is no other ship that gives me the sense of unadulterated brute force that this ship does. And if I ever feel like dominating a conflict zone by myself, there simply is no other ship I'd rather be flying. I don't have to worry about the guy with the big guns. I am the big gun. And it all just feeds this visceral madness and pride knowing that there isn't anything in here that can stop you. The battle was over the moment you stepped on the field. This is just for fun. But, and this is a big one, that fun comes at a cost. Hey guys and girls, my thoughts on the Federal Corvette. I don't actually use it. There is, frankly, an obscene amount of effort into turning this ship into something that makes the boom boom look good. The one I have here represents literally thousands of hours of material gathering, credit grinding, and unnecessary travel to engineering bases. Several weeks spent pledging loyalty to someone I can't remember to spend even more credits on a part I will have only temporary access to. And we're not even talking about playing postman to the Federation to unlock the rank. Who knew delivering mail could make you a rear admiral? 
Because what's even worse is when you find yourself up against actual people who know what they're doing, you're going to get eaten alive. The unfortunate truth is that a well-flown FDL or crate will absolutely spank even the best spec Corvette in competitive play. A halfway decent cutter pilot will have you chasing them to the ends of the galaxy, all while chipping away at your shields. And to be frank, there's a reason you don't see a lot of Corvettes mingling with the PvP community. Speed is what dictates these engagements, and the Corvette simply isn't fast enough. And I, I just, I don't enjoy how, how slow it is, how lumbering it is, how poorly it handles. Now, for a big class ship, it handles rather well, but for the ships that I enjoy to fight, you know, maybe I even say you're, you know, you're talking to the guy who has a Sidewinder as his logo. You'd be forgiven for feeling a bit discouraged. The ship is expensive to buy and even more to outfit. Around the 1.2 billion mark. It requires a mind-numbing rank unlock, and then you're going to need another few hundred hours collecting baubles to make it useful. If you fly it around other people, it makes you a target, and watching your prismatic stack and shield cell banks become worthless from a single torpedo is probably the most demoralizing thing that can happen to anyone in the history of the universe. There are, of course, very good reasons why the Corvette is simply not worth the effort. But when you walk out onto the battlefield, it's hard to remember what they were. So it took me a long time to get this. I, I appreciate having it so much more because I had to work for it so hard. Even when you know what the problems are, you still respect the Titan when you see it. I mean, you've become attached to a ship. I've had this ship for multiple years now. It's been changed a bit through the years, but I've had this for so long now that you kind of become a bit attached to it. I said at the beginning of this film that this ship speaks to you. I can say that because it spoke to me and because I've seen it speak to others. And when something is able to do that through how it looks or what it does or how it makes you feel, then there's a name for it. A work of art. Thank you all so much for watching this series. It was a privilege to make it for you. I have an official announcement coming out soon that I hope you'll stay tuned for, and I look forward to hearing from all of you in the comments. A sincere thank you to all the creators who chimed in. Oh, right there. <laughs> I'm nowhere Do near as crazy. Do you have an emerald mine? I'm nowhere, you know what? I'm, one, I'm nowhere near as crazy. Two, I'm nowhere near as... I'd be honest. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not leaving that because, like, one, I got triggered about that. And two, the reason why I got triggered about that is, I think, something that, like, you know, says a lot about CCP. Is um, this Darkshine's response in Reddit or what do you think? No, no, no. This is oh, yeah. the, the uh, turning counterinsurgency, uh, stuff, turning stuff into the counterinsurgency outpost, gives you a oh, okay, yeah. ward crate. And uh, what's in this reward crate? We don't know. This is the it's issue. Gonna...
Federal Corvette is arguably the most powerful combat ship in Elite Dangerous, as while the Anaconda can do more raw damage and the Cutter has stronger shields and higher speed, the mix of relative agility, two huge hardpoints, hardpoint placement, and balance of defenses make it the go-to choice for a wide range of players. In Episode 2 of Exegius Reacts to Your Builds, by popular demand, we're going to focus on this massive ship alone. Given about a third of the builds that were submitted were the Corvette. I'm Commander Exegius, so sit back and let's look at six different builds. Yes, six. For this, the biggest of all Federal ships. So please, please, no more Corvette submissions. We're going to start with what is likely the most popular build, PVE Combat. This is perfect for conflict zones, hazardous resource extraction sites, nav beacons, or really anywhere you need to destroy NPCs quickly and efficiently. As before, we're going to go rather quickly with all the builds linked in the description below. I'd like to thank good friend and one of the most skilled large class pilots in Elite, Captain Pelly, for his input on the combat builds. As the core will be virtually identical between our combat builds, we'll start with military hull with heavy duty deep plate, a full class power plant with overcharge and thermal spread to curb a bit of heat, dirty drag drive thrusters, and increased range mass manager frame shift drive. D-rated lightweight life support with D-rated long-range sensors provides seven and a half minutes of oxygen, plenty of time to synth more if necessary, with 10 kilometers of scanner range. Closing out the core, we'll have a charge-enhanced super conduit distributor. Moving on to the optionals, we'll start with a class seven biweave, and where you'd normally run thermal fast charge on a biweave, here we're going to run reinforced, as while this will slow our regeneration time, our shields will be so powerful overall, that's not a huge concern as we'll be running four, yes, four shield cell banks, all with specialized recycling, which will lower their heat output during banking and shorten the spin-up time. You'll need to toggle two of these off, then back on after you burn through the class sevens due to power. A class five fighter bay lets you add some more DPS with an NPC or friend, and three class five guardian shield reinforcements add another 650 megajoules of shields. A class four guardian frameshift drive booster adds nine light years of much needed range. If, however, you have a carrier and won't be jumping the build, you could go with more hull here. The same goes for the class four fuel scoop, and for our last two slots, we'll go with a 3D expanded capture arc interdictor and too much saving a lot of shield boost, mobile resistances and reach 60 bank with the system man is all for while I would never suggest someone PvP in a large class ship, especially a beginner, PvP player has a go at you. Let's move on to a beginner PvP build. As while I would never suggest someone PvP in a large class ship, especially a beginner, if that's just your jam and you insist, this is what I and Pelly would suggest. We'll start with the PvE build and cover the changes, where first I'd start with a reactive hull with heavy duty deep plate. This is, however, assuming you have essentially unlimited funds and want every advantage you can get, as this will add over 4 million to your rebuy. As the rest of the core is the same, let's move on to our optionals, where we'll start with a prismatic with reinforced high cap instead of the biweave. As you likely won't regenerate a biweave before death anyway, having maximum shields is key. Again, we'll run four cell banks, but this time we'll go with rapid recycling to mitigate feedback cascade railguns as much as possible. This time we'll be running hull reinforcements, lots of them, all with heavy duty deep plate, save for the class one where we'll want thermal resist with reflective to plug the thermal hole from our resistance armor. If you go with military grade, you can make this another heavy duty. You'll want a single class five module reinforcement to bolster your other modules, specifically your power plant, which will become rather vulnerable once your shields drop. Again, saving our hard points for last, we'll go with the very similar utilities. Just this time, we'll run a single thermal and single resistance augmented so we can run two heat sinks, given we'll be banking during active combat, both with ammo capacity. Finally, let's look at the hard points, as these are gonna take some skill. Starting with our two huge, we'll want two plasma accelerators with efficient, lowering our distro, power draw, and heat output. However, we don't wanna be scared of that heat as thermal conduit will add a massive 60% damage when fired above 100% heat with no negatives with fired below. 
many will use their cell banks to preheat themselves to get this damage buff, using the heat sinks only when their heat gets out of control, say north of 150%. For the large and two mediums, this time we'll choose fixed frag cannons, all with overcharged, two with incendiary and one with drag where drag munitions will have the effect of removing all pips from engines for several seconds, something that is highly annoying to your enemy. We'll close out with two small long-range railguns. This time you'll absolutely want feedback cascade, as you'll almost certainly come up against enemies running cell banks. Given the fixed weapons and slow velocity of the PAs, this build is much higher skill than the PVE build, but if you insist on flying the vet in PVP, this is one of the best places you can start. Let's look at one last combat build, Anti-Xeno or Anti-Thargoid. I'd like to thank Gluttony Fang of the Anti-Xeno Initiative for his advice here. Links to their knowledge base is in the description. We're going to run the same core and similar optionals and utilities as the PvP build with a few changes, adding even more hull. We'll drop the two Class 6 banks, opting for more hull using two Guardian module reinforcements as these provide defense against Thargoid Force Lightning. For our utilities, we'll go with six heavy-duty boosters, as Thargoids only do absolute damage. Adding two ammo capacity heat sinks to offset the heat we'll generate from our banks and rather hot weapons. Moving on to those, we'll want two remote-release flak launchers to deal with the Thargon Swarm, with a large gimbaled long-range thermal vent beam laser also helping us mitigate heat, as while you can do damage to the Thargoid shields with these, we really only care about the thermal vent effect. Remember, the amount of venting is based on the heat output of the weapon, making long range a much better choice over efficient. We'll close out with the most effective of all anti-xeno weapons, the Guardian Gauss Cannon, which is critical to Thargoid combat. If you haven't yet unlocked these railgun-like weapons, and you're at all serious about Thargoid combat, they are an absolute must-have. Now that we've covered the combat builds, most of you will likely stop watching here. But, as we have three more builds to go, I hope you'll stick with me, as next up we have a great role for the Corvette, and that is mining. We're going to start with the same core and utilities as the PVE build, save for swapping one of the resistance AUG and thermal boosters for a pulse wave scanner and lightweight point defense, placed on the bottom, to protect against hatch breakers. Looking at our optionals, we have many changes, starting with two Class 7 cargo racks, providing 256 tons of space for cargo and limpets, enough for about an hour of mining. Then we'll add collector limpets, a lot of collector limpets, as these are the key to efficient mining. With this class... planet's landscape is an intriguing sight as it's composed of angular shapes and geometric divisions that appear unnatural. While its surface follows a mesmerizing fractal pattern, it is interesting to note the presence of irregular boulders and rocks amidst the perfect cubes. As we delved deeper into our exploration, we stumbled upon multiple crashed flying machines that were equipped with colossal terraforming lasers. Examining their logs revealed that these machines were custom made for an unknown client. The information we've uncovered has the potential to revolutionize all future terraforming projects. This planet's landscape is an intriguing sight as it's composed of angular shapes and geometric divisions that appear unnatural. While its surface follows a mesmerizing fractal pattern, it is interesting to note the presence of irregular boulders and rocks amidst the perfect cubes.